All right, brothers and sisters. Well, that's another fantastic evening. Of, oh, okay, looks like we got one more call here. We'll go ahead and take this last call, and we'll wrap it up for tonight. I want to speak to the air trader, Jamie. <laughs> hey, Billy, bring me my fair and hair. Jesus Christ, I got to tell that boy. This irritated, Janie. I oh, irritated. Man, I've been trying to get through you. Would you tell them small hats to turn off that heart machine? It's raining catching dogs out here. I swear to God, if I catch one of them out here, I swear to God, it'll be the end of his face. Janie, you do something about this, all right? All right, you do something about these hats before I got to get to them, all right? And, and you guys out there in Warren Horizon, listen, I, I, ain't, I ain't racist, you know? Uh, my mammy was black, and she <laughs> Man, she was a good mammy. Oh, God, I miss her. I ain't racist, man. It's these Jews the problem with me, man. These small hats. So y'all go ahead and take care of them before I get out there. Hey, Bill, bring my shotgun. I'm sick of this hard stuff. Uh, okay. All right. Uh, well, uh, brothers and sisters. <laughs> uh, brothers and sisters, uh, thanks for listening to the show tonight. Uh, yeah, uh, all right, thanks, thanks for listening to the show, uh, Hotel. Hey, brother, did you try that new restaurant down the street? Yeah, yeah, I went there yesterday, and the food was off the chain, and the chicken was like, how, how did he say that, like, uh, to die for? <laughs> Whoa. To die for? To die for them. I'm saying, I mean, the chicken was good. You know what I'm saying? Can't you just say the chicken was good? Does it have to be to die for? That sounds a little... Uh, I'm you, uh, I'm, did you wear skinny jeans while you were eating the chicken? Nah, I'm saying, I, I, I said it was good, man. Was it rainbow chicken? Hold up, man. I said, I got it with a sparkly buckle on it. What's the server doing? A sissy belt? Man, I'm, I'm just saying, the chicken, the chicken was good. Look, man, the chicken was good, no homo. Nah, it's, it's time to stay soon. You're supposed to say it before, bro. Like I can't say, I had to say no homo. There's no regulation on when you can say no homo. What are y'all, like a regulatory governing body over no homo? Brothers and sisters, don't get caught up. Don't let the homosexual talk about the you in. We are the final part of the end of war against white slavery. Stand strong. This African service announcement has been brought to you by War on the Horizon. War on the Horizon. You gotta love it. Man, oh, here we go again, man. Two gay dudes kissing on the bus. That's what I'm talking about. Why you got to be, man? They trying to turn everybody gay. You know what I'm saying, bro? Nah, brother, I really don't know what you're talking about. I'm saying, you see the bus. You see how they got the two dudes kissing on the job. It's like commercial. Everywhere you go, everything gay. Youngest walking around with these little uh, the faggy fit jeans and everything. You know what I'm saying? Well, brother, do you have hate in your heart? What? Yeah, that's not the Christian thing to do. You should love our neighbors. Man, I ain't loving no gay neighbors, Joe. It ain't say you gotta love your gay neighbors. It don't say love your neighbors. It don't say. Which I ain't talking about neighbors. I'm talking about faggy. So you saying you love faggy? What I'm saying is. Love is the most powerful force in the universe. And Jesus came to show us how we should love our brothers. Man, you sound real gay right now, talking about loving some brothers. Now, hold on, Joe. Look, nah, look, if you want to tell me something, just let me know. I might be preaching to the choir, man. I'm saying, the fact you talking about loving, you know what, man? Get this, man. I'm going to walk. Peace. Brothers and sisters, sometimes your arms is not long enough to box a spooky in the sky. Spend your time where it's most useful. This is the African Service Announcement. War on the horizon. We'll see you on the battlefield. War on the horizon. You gotta look. How you doing, brother? Can I get you one of these? Sure. What's this about, brother? We got a situation up in Delaware that's crazy right now, brother. Brothers are being lynched. Oh, lynched? In 2012? That's the same exact thing we said when we got the story. So how did you hear about it? That's a good question. You know, there was a professor who was at Delaware State University named Dr. Jahi Issa. And to make a long story short, he was doing some research and educating the students on how they're trying to destroy and demolish HBCUs. Oh, I went to Bowie State. I went to Hanson University. So you know how the students were responding to that. And in the midst of sharing this information with the students, 
he stumbled upon the fact that they were actually lynching brothers in Dover, Delaware. Oh. How come I didn't hear about this on CNN? You didn't hear about it on CNN because it's an election year. Do you know who the state's attorney is for the state of Delaware? Who would that be? That would be Bo Biden. Bo Biden is the vice president, Joe Biden's son. So as you can see, this is an extremely political situation. Understood, understood. So, so what do you have to do with this? We represent an organization called War on the Horizon. And what we do is we educate black people to the threat of white supremacy and teach our people how we can prepare for black survival. No doubt. Much needed, much needed. Definitely going to check this out. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you, bro. Be safe out there, all right? All right. Got it. Man, woman, child, yeah, straight pride. Man, woman, child, I'm talking about nature. 
My ancestors woke me up this morning. They said, son, you do know what time it is, don't you? I said, what time is that? They said it's war time, so welcome to the war front. Brothers and sisters, we have an outstanding round table for you tonight. Oh, yeah, we're going to have a good time tonight. We got a question that has been brewing in the minds and hearts of our people for a long time, and I'm telling you right now, it's a legitimate question that needs to be asked because I know a lot of sisters are asking it. I've heard brothers asking the same question, and we're going to talk tonight. We started off in January with our round table, and we did uh, talking about God's gift, you know, black woman, uh, how to be a good black woman to a strong black man, an outstanding program. Uh, then we got a little more controversial, a little, stepped it up a little bit. As controversial as that was, we stepped it up and, and we asked the question, why are the children of conscious parents so crazy? And we had an outstanding program, of course, with the Jegna, uh, Baba Baruti. And, uh, of course, always, we have, uh, always, always got that feminine energy with our sister Lady Shabazz in the house. And uh, they really, really, really broke down, and our brother DJ and, 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 uh, uh, from the Cypher, and they broke it down and gave us some excellent insight into why we see this reality. Well, tonight, brothers and sisters, we're turning it up. We said for March, we're going to stop playing games. We're going to stop throwing little underhanded pitches, nice, soft guy. We're going to go right to the head. We're asking a straight-up question tonight. And in, in order to do this, we couldn't have just one person, so we got – we got, some, uh, we got some surprises for you tonight, brothers and sisters. We're going to have, of course, as always, our sister Lady Shabazz in the house doing what she's known to do, which is bring the truth in a feminine but strong manner. She's going to talk straight to us tonight. Then we got our brother Mayasa Bomani. He can do a crack of grimy. He can be white trash or a crooked hymie. You know, you know what we're talking about. That's United Front strong in the house with that woo. And then, of course, we got that brother that hits him hard to the ribs, one shot to the body knockouts. We got our brother body shots in the house. And then I'm not even going to tell you who else we got because this is a special surprise for you. You know, when you're asking a question this serious, you know, you got to bring in somebody special to answer this. So I got a special surprise for y'all. Y'all been beating us up, calling week after week. When is, it, when is a brother coming back? Well, we got a brother on the air tonight that y'all been waiting to hear from. So this is going to be an outstanding program. Without any further ado, I'm going to bring each one of my guests on, open up these lines. Is that my brother, Mayasa Bomani? BB for holiday, brother. Yes, sir. How you doing, soldier? I'm good. I'm up here enjoying my time with my family like a straight man should, brother. Yeah, oh, oh, say, oh, say that again? I'm up here enjoying my time with my wife and my children like a straight man should, brother. Well, brother, you, well, it, it's hard to say that because, I mean, we don't know if there are any straight people here. Oh, man, well, that's, what we, that's what we're trying to find out tonight, right? That's what we're trying to find out tonight, brother. <laughs> All right, well, let me see. Uh, let me make sure I uh, got my brother. Is this my brother Body Shots in the house? Body Shots in the building at Hotep General. Yes, sir, Hotep, Hotep. Well, Hotep means peace, and I don't know if we're going to have any peace tonight because if I find out everybody's fags, I'm leaving, y'all. I'm I'm out, man. No more woe. I'm 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 go. It's not woe. It's go. Cause if ain't no, if ain't no straight man. I might have to get a jet up out of here, man. <laughs> I hear you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's see if I got this right here. Is this my sister, Lady Shabazz? No, sir. No, sir. Wrong one. This your brother, True. Oh, what's up, brother? How you doing? Elevating family. All right. Now, now, were you scheduled for the program too? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But I can fall back and be a listener. Nah, nah. Hey, look. Look, with a brother like the name True, I know you need to be on this program because if you're on the program, then you got to tell us the truth. We don't want to just hear the right answer or a good answer or a nice, polite answer. We want the truth. So, brother, yes, sir. you on the board only if 
you're going to promise to command and give us the truth. Oh, without a doubt, until my heart stops beating. Uh-oh, uh-oh, this is going to be hot now. I can see this is going to be hot. This is going to be hot now. Let me go here to Mrs. Shabazz in the house. Peace, how you doing? Hey, we in the house ready for war, sister, so we got that female spirit. They say we not balanced. They say so you should have the same amount of women that you have men. We don't need that. If you got one solid black woman, you got all you need in the house with your feminine energy. So we ready to rock. Ready to do Yes, sir, especially since I experienced heterophobia yesterday. I'm here. I'm ready. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. She goes, sister, going to have to tell us about the heterophobia. And I got one more person I got to bring on the line. Oh, we, this is a round table for the round table tonight. We're going to get this thing cracking. Uh-oh. Who that, who, who that is right there? Who that is? I'm just going to say in the words of the Azadian People's Liberation Army, is Waletu. A BB for ODA, black power, cracker in the trunk, and man, straight pride worldwide. <laughs> this is the international field marshal of the new Black Panther Party, Minister King Samir Shabazz, or my new African name is Minister Nkosi Samir Busara Shabazz. Black power, family. Black power. Got the king. They say, what is it? The king is back. Don't they got a song? Don't they got a track on the United Front to say the king is back? Yes, sir. Back in black in full effect, ready to break the cracker's neck. All right. That's what I'm talking about. So, look, we're going to go ahead and get right into it. What I'm going to do tonight, I think all the brothers can agree with this, since we got a lot of testosterone here. We're going to start with our sister. We're going to let Lady Shabazz be the first one to take a crack. And you can tell your story and everything, but give us the answer, sis. We want to know. Look, look, I mean, I'm keeping it real. You got brothers walking around with lavender ties and pink socks. And you got, you got, uh, you got, you got dudes that's gay walking around with women. They married to these women, and they married to them, and they gay. And these women know that they gay, and they got some kind of arrangements going on. You got cats that you finding out from the other side of the dudes you thought was always a cool cat is flip-flopping. And then you got dudes you think that they heterosexual, but they talk so soft. You can't even tell with the soft sound of their voice if they if they, if, 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 if they a cookie or a pancake. I mean, you just can't tell these days. I'm asking you a straight-up question. Are there any more 100% all the time heterosexual black men in this world? Yes, there are, because I'm married, and if it wasn't, I would have a problem. <laughs> Shabazz would be in jail. Um, so, yes, I would say there definitely are, but I'm very disgruntled with black men because it's getting less and less, and if it wasn't for men like my husband and the people of War on the Horizon, I may not be able to answer that question uh, the same way. So I say yes, Okay, so but you not say, many. You say yes, but it's not many. Exactly. All right, so 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 go ahead. When you say not many, give me a, a, a give me a percentage estimate. If you was to talk about America right now, what percentage of black men are 100 percent heterosexual all the time? They ain't flip flopping on the fag thing. They are 100 percent heterosexual. Period. What percentage? It depends on the age. I would say 35 and up. Um, you're going to get a lot more heterosexual men. Anywhere from 35 to like. 21, I don't know. It might be 50, 50, 60, 40. I'm not sure. Once you get into high school, I think the homosexuals are in the majority from what I've seen. So give, so give me one number, just if you had to add all the age groups up. Give me a number. What percentage of black men are still fully heterosexual? I don't know. I'm going to say I'm going to have to flip a coin. I'm going to have to say 50, 50, because most of the time I don't know. And if Ooh. I can't tell, I just consider you suspect. Yeah. All right. That's, that's, that's a rough one, brothers. She's saying we half fag, half flag. Okay, let's, let's go. My brother, Bomani Mayasa, who can do a crack of grimy now. You say you can do a crack of grimy, but can you tell me if there's any straight brothers left? Talk to me, bro. No doubt about it, because I'm, I consider some myself a black man. I am a black man. I'm on a panel with some black men and a sister. And uh, I believe and I know everybody that I'm speaking to on the other end of this phone is straight, including myself. So there has to be. Now... What I will say is that 
there are a lot more questionable, suspect black males running around now than ever before. And uh, just recently, um, like my daughter's uh, born day party was today, and there was a little boy running around. He's about seven, eight years old. And, you know, he's jumping around, jumping on me, playing. And I'm like, you know, trying to calm him down. And he started to, you know, try to tickle me and all this. So I had to bring him to his mother. I said, listen, man, like your son is violating all male code right now. I had to sit this little boy down. Like, listen, man, we don't tickle grown men. That's not, that's not what we do. You need to calm down. Like, and it's too much, it's too much, like a lot of black women are letting these young, uh, uh, you know, letting their sons get away with too much uh, feminine questionable behavior. You mm. know? Um, but if I had to put a percentage on it, brother, I had to agree with the sister. It's more like 50-50 because if a brother ain't gay, they damn sure acting gay a lot of times. You know, they, they want to dress more prettier than a woman. They out there getting their eyebrows done and getting manicures, mani pedis. They out there, you know, they, they're afraid to scuff their boots. They're walking on their heels like you're wearing work boots and you're afraid to get some dirt on your Thames, man. Like, be a man. Man up. Uh, they, walk around, they walk around with glitter belts on now, man. Like, it's, it's getting ridiculous, brother. Man, I be feeling, I'm hearing what you're saying, man, because I be feeling bad. Sometimes I'll be out there in, my, in the yard and I'll be out doing all this yard work. And I say, you know, when I was young, I was like, what's this dude doing in the yard? That's woman stuff. Now I'm all in the yard enjoying it. I'm like, man. Is it just that I'm getting older and more mature and I want to have a nice yard? Or is this fag thing is not catching me on the woman thing, but, man, do I got a green thumb not because I want to grow fruits in the yard, but because the fag breeze is hitting her? I don't know what's going on, man. It's crazy. man. 50-50. Okay. Yeah, definitely 50-50. All right, let me go and ask my brother uh, Body Shot. Now, come on, brother Body Shot. Keep it real, man. Talk to me, bro. What, what are we looking at, man? Uh, man, it don't look good. You, you, you remember those Cheeto commercials? The little cheetah, the little Cheeto cat. Chester Cheetah, yeah, Chester Cheetah, no doubt. Yeah, Chester Cheetah. You remember he had the little, the little cheesy meter. <laughs> yeah, man, he used to go from cheesy to more cheesy to dangerously cheesy. <laughs> but I, I cheese meter, man. It's, <laughs> I, the the fag meter is like off the chops, man. It's like dangerously faggoty in the black world community, bro. We it's, it's dangerously faggoty. So, so it's dangerous. And it went, when the brother says dangerously faggoty, he talking about we was out we was out at the cheesecake factory today eating it. it was a nice little pretty little young lady that was a waitress, and it was, uh, it was three of us. And we sitting there, and uh, we started talking to her and. So I said, I know you're glad that there's some heterosexual black men that came in here, right? And I didn't think she was going to respond. And then, then and tell, them, tell them if I'm lying, brother body chat. Why did the sister say, yeah, usually when I see three black men, I assume that they come in here dating because that's what the norm is. So it is really good for me to see some black men that I can tell a heterosexual here. That's a real good feeling. Am I lying, brother? Did she say that? Right. That's, that's verbatim what she said. She, she she looked at us and literally was telling us at the restaurant that she works, if she sees more than one black man together with each other, the, her assumption is that they're gay because that's the frequency. Every now and then, she'll see some heterosexual brothers. That, 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 that's what she said. That's what the sister said. I mean, let me talk about today. We're not talking about no long story from 20 years ago. This isn't said it today. So my, my question to you, brother Body Shot. What's the numbers looking at, man? Out of black men in America today, what would the numbers be to you? What percentage? Oh man, uh, I'm going to put I'm going to put it at about ten percent. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Okay, you got to break that down. Everybody else was I could I could fifty fifty as bad as it is. It's killing me. You got ten percent. You got to break that down, Bruh. I mean, they got so many of our of our brothers on lockdown, man, catching joints, man. But they don't even consider they so gay that they giving and not receiving. So you got that whole dynamic going on. Then, then you got brothers that's on the block that, you know, for whatever reason, he don't take a position on it. He, like, he cool with the fact, so it's only a matter of, time before he, he getting his cheeks tossed. I mean, bro, it's, it's very, very few 
black men that have Democrats that are very definitive on the position that they do not want fags anywhere in their space. Oh, boy. All right. So this brother said 10%. God. My brother, true. We trying to get the truth, man. If I'm coming for the truth, come on the meter. I want the truth meter. to talk to me, brother. Any heterosexual black, 100%, 100% heterosexual, not like heterosexual, but like 100% heterosexual where he got his queen and he sees his walking down the street and he said, don't look. Please don't look because his heterosexual meter is, is ringing and he wants to look. Talk to me, bro. There definitely is 100% heterosexual men out there, but majority of those heterosexual men do not know how to be masculine. Dang. You got to understand that the average boy, your know, average son is being raised in a home with just his moms. There's no fathers in the home. So besides that element, then you got the, the lack of rights of passages. You have the lack of skills of knowing how to be a husband. So there's definitely heterosexual men, but then a lot of those heterosexual men had feminine tendencies, some on purpose and some just because they were raised in a house with a woman. So, so we have to redefine, and I'm, when I say redefine, I'm not talking about like we have it. We have to go back and get the masculine, you know, uh, energy or, or, or culture, for lack of a better word, and teach it to the, to the boys. And, and, and what's sad is even some men. You know, we run a youth program, Liberation School, and in conjunction with Liberation School, you know, I work with other brothers and sisters in the community that work with other youth. And there's a brother named Gene. He's a hardworking man, works with his hands. And he tells me how all the time the high school student, students, we're talking about 14 or 16 years old, come up to him like, can you teach me how to be a man? You know, I want to, can you teach me how to paint, how, how to do plumbing? Can you show me how to be a man? So we have, uh, we're talking about 16-year-olds that in, in this society, you know, in two years, 18, you're considered a man, right, who are considered men but don't know how to be men. So to answer your question without making a drone out, yes, there's definitely some heterosexual men. There's some on the phone right now. And, but a lot of those men don't know how to be masculine, don't know how to be men. So give me a percentage, man. In America, black males, what percentage would you say? 100% heterosexual, no question that. I would say 70%. Based on my experience, where I'm from, and what I see, I would say 70%. Okay, Brother King Samir. It's on yes, you. sir. Brother Samir? I'm here, Black. Yeah, the question's on you. Well, I would have to look at this very, very deep, and I want to take it. A, 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 I want to take it somewhere very quickly and very briefly. What are the characteristics of a 100% heterosexual man? Mm. What is the qualifications of a 100% heterosexual man? Now, as I'm reading this book, The Forbidden of Homosexuality, as you talked about before, Brother Jeannie, the gay bar, and we have to look at this a little bit deeper now. I want to read something just very briefly, family, about the homosexual agenda. And so far, everybody's point was right on point because it ties right in to what I'm about to read. Okay? It says here about the heterosexual uh, in a 1987 speech to the National Press Club in D.C., homosexual spokesman Jeff Levy proclaimed, we are no longer seeking just a right to privacy and a protection from wrong. We also have a right, as heterosexual Americans already have, to see government and society affirm our lives. In an article called Gays on the March in 1975, Time Magazine active gay activist or fag activist Barbara Giddings stated what the homosexual wants and he is neither willing to compromise nor morally required to compromise is acceptance 
of homosexuality as a way of life fully on a par with heterosexuality. Now I'm going to take it a step further. Now I just gave you their political agenda. Well, I just came out of Zimbabwe with the Honorable Robert Mugabe, who basically told the white man, the British white man and the United States of America's white man, who put sanctions, economic sanctions, agricultural sanctions, all type of sanctions on Zimbabwe due to the fact that His Excellency Robert Mugabe would not accept gay marriage and homosexuality in Zimbabwe. There is 1% of white people in Zimbabwe and Mugabe held the line against the gay bomb. So now the currency in Zimbabwe is floating very slowly because they get no aid just due to the fact that Robert Mugabe wants to keep his country 100% heterosexual. Mm. But as I travel through Johannesburg, South Africa, I'm walking down the street, and I see fags everywhere. Black? I'm telling you what's real, family. Black men walking around with damn high heels on. Black men standing in the middle of the road selling a little pack of frozen Kool-Aid with turquoise skinny jeans on and a goddamn pink tank top in the middle of the streets traveling from Sharpville back to Johannesburg. We're sitting in the theater downtown Soweto, Johannesburg, where we were watching a play about the Pan-African Congress this young brother put on. And as we coming through the door, family, leaving the theater, these two flaming, flaming, I mean flaming sissies walk through the damn door holding hands. One of these fools had on some white skinny jeans. His head was polka dot. With the, with the bronze and black mess in his head, with a damn purple shirt and some high heel shoes on. The other fag had on a damn skirt. A skirt, you heard what I said, a skirt wearing Negro in Africa. So this gay bomb is all over the world. My percentage, I would say 85% of black men are faggots. 85%. Why? Because 85% of black people are unconscious. They are the poison animal eaters. They know not themselves, they want not for themselves, and they hate themselves. So anything the white man brings before them, they will gladly accept it. Even gay marriage, even bending over for another man, even bending over for another woman to ride you like another man. We have gone completely to hell to sleep. And I've seen it live and in person, bags of swagging in Africa. Yes, the white man's rulership of white sexual warfare is in Africa alive and well. Black power. All right, all right. Well, I guess I'll go ahead and put my two cents in here. And I'm going to say something It's going to sound self-serving and it's going to sound like I'm being funny, but I really mean this. Um, my honest opinion is that in a world where the major overt war against a race of people, that race this time being us as black people, is to sexualize our children and to make us into a bunch of fags and lesbos, the only men that can be considered heterosexual men are the men that are fighting that agenda directly and overtly. Mm -hmm. If you're not fighting it, if you're not resisting it, if you're not angry about it, let's say there's a man out there, he doesn't know how to fight it, but he's angry. Even his anger is a fight because he's not bending. I'm going to say there's about 1% of the population of black men in this country 
who are heterosexual, 100% heterosexual. And that 1% represents men who hate what they see happening and are ver- verbal about it in their families and in their homes. They won't tolerate it from their children, particularly the real strong heterosexual black men in this country are the ones attached to one horizon. On some level, they either listen to the programs, they love what they hear, it, even if they haven't heard us, if they did hear us, they would, they would, they, this is something they would gravitate towards because they want to protect their children. They want to fight this filthy fag war, and they want to win, and they want to defeat their enemies. And so that other 99% of black males is a group of males, like Brother Samir said, who will surrender to whatever the uh, will of the enemy is. They Christian Negroes, so they're in a fag religion. They um, any variable, uh, they fags, I mean straight out fags. They hanging out with fags. Men don't hang out with something that devi- that that far of a deviance from from black manhood. I'm gonna say, if you want to find a real black man, a real strong 100% heterosexual black man, I'm saying it's gonna be in Warner Horizon or. An affiliated group, meaning somebody who thinks like War on the Horizon, somebody who War on the Horizon brings on to speak to our people. I'm not even being funny when I say this. Um, in this country, I'm saying if they ain't got no affiliation to what we're doing, you have a small group, a segment of people who are black men who still, without any information, are holding the line on this fag thing. I'm going to say the vast majority they don't even know that there's a way to fight this. They surrender to the fag, and even if they're not involved in it physically, if you ask them how they feel, they'll start defending faggots. Oh, well, I mean, they got a right to live. And who, how, does a fa- how do you bend over and take something in your backside and all of a sudden you got a right to live, but you didn't have a right to live before that? Why would you even say that? When do fags, when does sexual deviance give you, and how does sexual deviance give you special rights? So I would say of the real men who will stand and not just say that they don't agree with it, but do something about it. That, that makes you a heterosexual black man. I say we got about 1% of our population, most of which are either affiliated with Warner Horizon, have talked to somebody that, that talked to somebody that has talked to Warner Horizon, or are just conscious of the fact this is assault and they're making some kind of stand against it in their family, in their community, in their church, wherever the heck they may be. And I'm saying that's a tiny percent of black men in this country. That, that's my personal opinion. So now I want to go to my next question. I want to go to the next question because – now, we got different answers here. We got, we got some people that are saying the highest percentage we heard was 75%. Our brother True said he thinks three out of four brothers are solid heterosexuals. And I, I, can, I can buy that depending on how you define that. I, I think I gave the lowest percent. I said 1%. And in between that, the average, I think most people that gave an answer said about 50-50. You meet a black male, he can go either way. You don't know which way he's going to go. Here's my question. If we, will we will, and I just wanted a quick answer from Mary, would everybody agree that this is an absolute crisis situation? Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Most definite. It's war. It's war. Okay, this is a war. So then this is my next question, and I'm not going to answer this. I'm just going to go down, down the line and ask everybody what their opinion is. What do you think, and I just want a short answer from everybody, because we're going to go to the phone and um, – we got somebody doing something in the background and giving some feedback, so please try to keep it quiet wherever you are so that, 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 that disrupts the quality of the program. Um, if you need to put it on mute while, you, while you're on hold, you can do that as well. Um, but, but brothers and sisters who are listening in, at the 8 o'clock hour, you're going to be able to call in 760-569-7676. That's 760-569-7676. Participation code 948656-POUND. That's 948656-POUND. Call in. Uh, wait on the line, and you'll be able to get in at 8 o'clock. Here's my question. Give me your idea of what the first step, what is the first step that we as a group of black people, whoever these people are, Warner Horizon and, and, and people who are related to Warner Horizon, what's the first step we take in trying to resolve or fix this problem of our, of our sons being turned into homosexuals and grown black men, teenagers, black men becoming homosexual? What's the first step we take? Not something that we've already done, but based on where we are right now, what do, what do we need to do that we haven't done right now to start combating this? I'm going to start with, um, I think I started with uh, uh, Lady Shabazz. I'll start with Lady Shabazz again. You know, what's our first step, sis? Okay, you mean more on the horizon or just the general public? Any, anybody involved, in this, any black person that wants to do something about it, what is the first step that we take collectively? 
the first step is to stop being apologetic and actually take a stance and don't waver from it. Um, yesterday, I decided I had—I don't wear makeup, but I had an event that I had to go to, so I was like, okay, I'm going to go get some makeup. Um, haven't worn makeup in like almost a decade, so I needed somebody to get my colors and all that. So I go to the store, shouldn't have been a problem. I wasn't even thinking I was wearing a T-shirt that says Straight Pride on it. I walk in there, everybody's busy. The only person that can help me is a fag. <laughs> So, and I'm not even thinking about what my T-shirt says. I'm just trying to get my makeup. So um, he starts uh, looking for my colors and all this kind of stuff, and he looks down at my shirt, and he's like, straight pride. And that's the kind of thing a lot of people would be embarrassed or, you know, try to apologize or something like that. But my thing is, if they can be so proud of their gay pride and they're confused as hell, why can't we be proud of doing the right thing? We're building families. We're doing what we need to do. So I'd say that's the first thing, number one, is to stop letting them make us ashamed to be who we are and stand for the right thing when they're obviously not embarrassed of what they're doing. Why, would we, why should we be embarrassed of our position? So I'd say that's the first thing because a lot of us um, get real scary when it comes to that uh, politically correct stuff. Mm, I like that. I like that. My Yasabo Mani, you can do a crack of grimy. Talk to me, bro. What's our first step? I think the first step should be that black men and women need to organize and stop looking for approval from anybody to deal with the problem of homosexuality and pedophilia in our community. They need to be dealt with and dealt with severely. Those who will violate children, it shouldn't even be a question of throwing them in jail. They should be dealt with by us and us directly. And then I think uh, we should be, we got to get to the, to, to the homosexuals in our community. They got to understand that they cannot parade around dressing and acting the way they want to act in our communities, and that they will be punished just for being in the presence of a, of a, of homosexual, I mean, of a heterosexual men and women in our community, they will be punished for coming around with thinking that that behavior is acceptable. Mm. Mm. All right, brother, body chats. What's our first step? Well, brother, uh, the first casualty in war is truth. So we gotta continue to educate our people. I think the the crux of the issue is that the majority of our people don't think it's an issue. Mm-hmm. And so we take a laissez-faire, lackadaisical approach to it, or what they do in their own bedroom is their own business, not understanding that in 1994, homosexuals in England tried to knock down and repeal the age of consent law to age 16. 1993, they tried to knock it down to 14 in Hawaii. And then March for Gay Pride in 1993 in Washington, D.C., they chanted, we're here, we're queer, and we're coming after your children. So I think a lot of people, once they connect the dots and make the link between homosexuality and sexual aggression, cloak and the desire for these degenerates to rape and sodomize your children, I think at that point when the light goes off, I think the masses of our people will wake up and take a militant stance uh, for the protection of our communities. Um, Brother True. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I think that uh, first and foremost, it starts with building families in our community. Black men need to start getting married again. More and more black women need to start getting married again. And also uh, educating the youth. Every chance you get, for example, I was in the park with my son earlier, and he has a toy pterodactyl. It's a brown one. And he told me that the pterodactyl has a wife, and it's pink. And I said, that's right, son, because a man is supposed to be with a woman. And that's a man pterodactyl, and the pink one is a woman pterodactyl. And that's the way things are supposed to be. So every moment you get to teach your daughter or your son about who he's supposed to be with or who she's supposed to be with, that's what we got to do. Uh, families need to do family things. We have uh, another family that we frequently uh, do things with at the house. Tomorrow we have a family run day, and it's a a brother named Born Master and his wife, E. Queen, and they have two children. So constantly exposing your children to a wife and a husband and children. So that becomes the norm, not a single family home, not just a woman, not just a man. So that that becomes a norm. Uh, When I first met my queen, uh, in Zynga, when she used to play, she never had, when she, when she used to play house, 
She never included the man in the house. This is this is what my Kia told me. She never had a, uh, the man part of the house when she would play house. It'd just be a woman and children. She said, now ever since they're with me, now we have noticed that now there's a man when she plays house. Now it's a father, it's a mother, and the children, and two cars. So I would say that it first starts with family. We gotta realize that this beast attacks our children first. He doesn't attack the men. He attacks the babies through the cartoons, the cereal boxes, the movies. Any chance he gets, he attacks the babies, the food. So we got to counteract that. Snatch the babies out of school. This is the last year that the babies that live with me, I can't, you know, the other two don't live with me, will be going to a public school. That's it. I'm going to do what If I got to work, if I got to get three jobs to support my family, I'm doing that. That's it. It's a wrap. They're not going to public schools no more. They're getting poisoned over there. So it starts with the family, education, and also, uh, remember, we have rights of passages, right? You know, and doing things with your son. I take my son to the park. We work out. Again, it goes back to show him, showing them what masculine, what the masculine energy does. Malkia has not Zinga in the kitchen all the time, showing her the feminine energy. And um, I also agree with the point. I don't want to repeat what everybody says, but we definitely got to stop making that stuff comfortable. I see them. It's two fags that go to my gym, and I see people that straight shaking their hand. You know, I, I dare one of those fags even look at me. That's my word. You understand? So definitely starts with the home, and I agree with uh, everything everybody else says. And um, we have to start reacting violently, man. I know we're scared to go to jail. You know what I'm saying? I got a record. I know what's going to happen if I go to jail. But we we can't play with that stuff, at least for the babies. All right, all right. Um, brother, brother, brother Samir. King Samir? All right, his line was King Samir? All right. I'm here. Okay. I have my, my phone on mute. <laughs> okay. Uh. We have to destroy the propaganda machine. True um, hit it right on right on the nail. The propaganda is the main weapon of warfare. Why? Because it, it could either put you to sleep or it, it could either wake you up. Until we destroy the propaganda machine of this white sexual warfare, it will continue somehow, some way. Here in Philadelphia, they teach every month of October gay history. Sister Shahrazad Ali and myself rolled around with petitions for years trying to get our people to get on board with this to prevent this from happening in the public school system in Philadelphia. We become so apologetic and comfortable with fags because they're either a close friend of the family or in the family. One of your homeboys is a fag and you're being apologetic for it. It's always a fag around somewhere in the cipher. Now with the acceptance of pedophilia, with the acceptance of homosexuality, with the acceptance of, uh, uh, as they call the transgender, whatever the hell that is, you're a fag. You like to wear thongs and bras, you're a fag. So we have to really, really get into the minds because now their agenda, back into this book again very quickly, is to attack the children, right, through Education. The homosexuality agenda escalates in public school systems. Pink triangles in the classrooms. Grade, grade school studies of gay history. Transvestite speakers. School-wide events to celebrate homosexuality. Student activists spreading propaganda through school publications. Legislate, legislation mandating homosexual indoctrination in the public school system. So this is what we have to battle first and foremost. Destroy the propaganda machine of homosexuality. Then kill the faggot, kill the lesbian, and those who even think about being a download or want to even 
have a curious notion in your damn head, we should cut your damn head and throw it in the river. Black power. Um, and, 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 and tell me what y'all think about because I'm listening to what everybody's saying. And everybody's saying something different, but it's very similar. It's almost like, and I'm going to try to, again, if I, if, I, if I misquote or I don't capture this, tell me that. But what I'm hearing in a nutshell is that we have to make an, and I'm not saying it has to be out in public, but I'm saying an open declaration of warfare against this behavior. In other words, this is not just like a lot of our people believe in Christianity and the white Jesus, and we don't agree with that. But the what I'm hearing from you all, the, 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 the immediate nature of what is required as relations to this is a little more immediate than just trying to get a brother or sister who's a Christian to realize that they don't have good information. What I'm hearing is we need to say if there's an issue for the twenty first century that starts us, it's not that we stop there. We don't it's not that we don't deal with economics, it's not that we don't deal with um, politics. It's not that we don't deal with uh, going back and forth to Africa. All of these things and protecting the African continent from invasion, all of these things are real. But if I'm hearing correctly, this is a source central issue that essentially if we lose this battle, there's no more battles to fight. So we need an open declaration of war against this behavior and then perhaps from that all of the different things that we need to do to save our people and, and, and build an African independent nation and deal with white supremacy, those things can occur. Uh, would it be accurate for me to say, and I'm going to go down the line again, and I want a quick answer on this one. I need a quick answer. we got to go to our line soon. Would it be fair to say that if we do not make an open, organized declaration of war, and open doesn't mean going to tell them, somebody still got some stuff going on in the background. I mean, please put your phone on mute if uh, – if, 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 if that's your stuff that's going on in the background. Um, if What we're going to do is if we don't come together and make an open declaration and say, okay, this is a serious issue. There's nothing we can play with. We're going to destroy this issue. We're going we're gonna to undermine the white sex thing, and we're going to move forward. If we don't do that, is it fair to say that any of our other efforts will be lost, or is that not true? We can say, no, this is not necessarily the primary thing. There are other things that we can do that are primary, too. This is just one of the things. So I'm going to go down the line real quick, and I want to know, the basic question is, is this something that's primary, that if we lose this battle, we lose everything, or is this just one of the things on the board that we have to deal with, and it's not necessarily more important than anything else there? Uh, Lady Shabazz. No, I think it's definitely important. I think that the war has already been declared on us. We just haven't realized it. So I definitely think it takes precedence. Okay, uh, Brother Bomani. I think it's definitely one of the primary issues in these days and times, considering that it uh, it affects the black family. There can't be a nation without family. All right. Um, uh, Brother Body Chats? Um, I, I think very much so. Uh, it It's almost, it's invariably uh, uh, the case that when I talk to black people uh, anywhere I go, somebody always has a fag story about how they were completely just paralyzed by complete fagdom in their personal lives, whether in their family, their church, their mosque, their place of work, their children's school. I think that's the one single issue that if we strike that, we pretty much strike gold with an issue that can uh, coalesce our people. Mm. Brother True. Yes, sir. It is. Primary issue is war. Okay. Um, Brother King Tamir. If we lose this war, we lose everything. We've lost everything, and there's no reason to even be fit to live. Mm. We must fight. This is open warfare. Okay. So we, we have an agreement on that, and let me ask one more question. And then I think we'll go to our phone lines. It just depends. We may go a little bit over past the hour because this is a real, real hot topic. We got a lot of people listening. This is very, very, very good dialogue, and, and I'm, I'm gaining a lot from it. Let me ask it like this. Okay, if this, 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 if this thing is critical, here's another question. In the 1920s, 
you know, uh, 1919, and you know, we, had, we, we, you know, slavery had ended just not that long before that, and uh, you know, with, with the small hats putting out our Birth of a Nation in the early 1900s, and the teens, and with uh, the, 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 the 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 lynchings and the poverty and the destruction of black communities, the Red Summer, these things, this violence against black people, and this undermining of our progress. Uh, uh, it, it, the violence and the open white racism and brutality of African people and constant enslavement of our people was a major issue that got us moving under the Marcus Garvey uh, UNIA movement that inspired many other movements. Out of that large movement grew, uh, you know, things like the Nation of Islam that w w w w came out and was born under very similar circumstances of a lack of knowledge of self, a lack of self-pride and identity, Really, the, 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 the NOI grew out of the UNIA. When we move forward into the 50s, very similar circumstances where, where they're raping black women, uh, where, they, where they're preventing black people from having any type of economic growth. And you have Robert F. Williams. Uh, and, 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 and out of his movement of, of armed struggle and resistance grows the Black Panther Party, grows SNCC, grows... Um, uh, the BLA and, and, and all these various other uh, organizations that grew largely out of police brutality and open, like, violation and warfare of our people. So if you talked about police brutality during the, the 60s, it was, a, it was an issue that was a hotbed issue because every brother had been through the mistreatment by police for no reason while he's walking down the street. It was a hotbed issue. Uh, during the lynching period, lynching was a hotbed issue because they, they knew somebody who had gotten lynched. Uh, poverty has been a hotbed issue. Would it be fair to say, or are we going too far to say, if you want to galvanize black people in America, in D.C., in L.A., in Virginia, in, in, in Chicago, in Detroit, in Atlanta, God, God forbid, um, uh, Mississippi, uh, even maybe in Africa, in, in, in Jamaica, in Haiti, would sexual abuse of children and homosexuality, would that be an issue? that if we brought it to the table and had a means to put it out and say, this is our issue, we're going to pick up our guns, we're going to defend our communities, we're going to put these fags out, we're going to deal with these pedophiles and these fags, we're going, to, we're going to end this problem in our community, we're not going to tolerate it, and we ain't going to let these crackers push it in on us. Could we attach ourselves to the militant propensity of African people with this issue? Uh, Lady Shabazz. Um, only a minority because the majority have already embraced that as black culture, but I think it would be enough of a minority to be successful. Okay, so you're saying we wouldn't get a whole lot of people, but the people that we would get, it will be successful. Exactly. I can go with that. Uh, Brother Bomani, what is your opinion? I agree with Sister Lady Shabazz. I think it would be a minority, but we will be successful. The reason why I say minority because, and particularly like in the islands, um, it's kind of, I don't want to say the norm, but I guess it is the norm for where you will see older black males dealing with or chasing after young black females. Like, older men with a 14, 15, 16-year-old girl is kind of common in the Caribbean and, 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 and in certain places in, in, in South America, like Brazil or what have you. So, you know, it, it, they, they don't look at it the same way as we look at it here. Like, a grown man coming after my daughter, who's 12, who'll be 13 this year... I, it's not even a, it's not even a question. Be taking your, taking your head off, bro. Wait a minute. We have somebody has a lot of children in the background just coming through. We, we got to. All right, go ahead, brother. Uh, I think that's me, man. There's a whole bunch of kids. My daughter's birth, born, born day party was today, man. Can you hear me? Oh yeah, I can hear you. Now. Yeah. Um. What I was saying was that in the islands, and particularly like in, in the Caribbean, it's kind of common where you would uh you would hear about a grown black male chasing after. A, having sexual relations with a young girl. Like, I know, I, I know a lot of people from the Caribbean who, you know, at, you know 16, 15, 16 year old were abused by, sexually abused by a grown man. Mm -hmm. So, and, and that goes on even to this day. So I don't think we would, it, we would get a whole lot of support in that aspect because a lot of people are still doing it, man. A lot of people are still participating in that misbehavior. So they're, they're hostile to homos, but the, 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 the messing with young girls thing is so common that it's culture. So, Right. They gravitate to that, but they would probably would they would they be anti fag? Anti fag definitely. Okay. Anti fag definitely. And they and not understanding that, 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 that sexual abuse of the young girls and the violation is what leads to a lot of the lesbianism which leads to women 
Ray right. films will end up being fags. They okay, I got you. Right. A, a lot of a lot of a lot of people don't see the connection between mm. uh, sexual abuse and homosexuality. They can't make that connection. Got you. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. All right, let me go on. Um, brother, body shots. Brother Body Chat? Yeah, I, I I think that's that's very doable. I think it's very doable. Okay. Uh, Brother True. Um, I don't think it would be supported because people are worried about where the next meal is coming from. And I think whenever you got masses of people who can't support their families, who don't know where their meals are coming from, who are not living comfortable, I think uh, a lot of times they would want to support it, but they're like, listen, brother, I need to pay my bills. I ain't got time for that. So if we can take care of people's stomachs, food, clothing, and shelter, the necessities, I think then we will see a new black man and rise up and say, okay, you, you know, let's let's fight this thing. But until we... Handle poverty, in my humble opinion, brother, I don't think it would be supported. I'll, I'll be right there with you on the front line. But I think most people, they just worried about where the next meal coming from or putting some food in the fridge, brother. Wow. All right, Brother King Samir. Yes, sir. I actually <clears throat> am very optimistic that it will be a great number of men, real black men and real black heterosexual women on this fight on the front line. Because what's going to happen, once we start making examples that we're no longer tired of, we're, we're not playing with this. Once we start putting some heads in the street, once we start putting some of these fags down into the concrete, they're going to wake up real quick. So you're either going to straighten up or we're going to straighten you out. All right. And let me say something because uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm hearing every, I think everybody's making excellent points. Um, but what, what I just heard, and I wanted the brothers to call in because we're about to go to the phone line, 760-569-7676. That's 760-569-7676. Participation code 948656-POUND. That's 948656-POUND. Let me ask this last question, and then we're going to go to our phone lines. I promise we'll go to the phone lines after this one. But um, Brother Truth threw a monkey wrench in this thing, and it's something that I think is worth talking about. So I'm going to ask a question to people. Let, let, without knowing or, or taking a stab at if what he said is absolutely correct, let's just consider the possibility. Would we be far more successful with a movement to protect the black community, or not even say, no, no, this is an offensive war. An anti-homosexual, anti-pedophile movement was started. Would it be more successful in the black community if there was economics, meaning you could get a job doing this, or there was some kind of way you could do security, or there was some kind of financial aspect tied to this warfare? Would it be more successful a movement? Lady Shabazz. Um, I think, of course, that would make anything more successful. But honestly, me growing up, um, when I was a teenager, I had grown men trying to approach me all the time, and they weren't broke. It was just acceptable that that was okay to do, to try to talk to a, a 13, 14-year-old girl. And I, I wasn't over, you know, didn't look old for my age. I was obviously, um, you know, a 13-year-old girl, and 25-year-olds would try to talk. And they had nice cars, they had jobs. So I think, of course, it would make anything a little bit more successful, but I don't think that that would solve it. Okay, that's a good answer. Brother Bo? Once again, I have to agree with Lady Shabazz, man. I don't think it would make it that, that, that much of a difference. I, I really believe is that um, a, lot of, a lot of us don't really understand, man, that we are actually being a – they are using this as a weapon against our people that this is actually an attack being, that, that, that's being perpetrated against us, you know, by Europeans to, to, to that when you have a feminized black man, and, and we're, we're not going to fight. Like, this is a part of the war. This is, this is a chess piece on the board. Um, and I feel like, again, that's why I said at the beginning, I, I feel that we have to not look for approval or acceptance from anybody. Those that know, 
got to go out there and do something about it. Once we start cracking heads, and like, I mean, you asked the question of should it be, you know, should, should, should be openly wage war against that. I don't think that necessarily has to be the case. I'm more for a guerrilla tactic where if Twan comes up missing, find floating down, you know, face down in the river somewhere, uh, well, I, I don't know what happened to Twan. It just so happened to all these fags that whenever they come around a certain neighborhood, they just come up missing. All these uh, people who has been accused of uh, touching touching children, uh, all son, man, his throat's getting cut and he's getting cracked open. I don't know what happened to these people. Mm. And 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 to your point, even though I use it, it wasn't the best term for me to use when I said over warfare. That's kind of what I meant. Uh, let me say it differently. An agreed upon agreed upon part of a community that agrees on that, and essentially that's what you're saying. People have to. Make the decision, and like Brother King Smith said, you're saying the same thing I hear. If there got to be consequences for for people to change, uh, Brother Body Shot. Uh, I know you mentioned something as far as uh, an offensive uh, tactic or maneuver. I don't, I don't see it as offensive uh, beyond getting us back to square one. What I mean is, no, no, the said, question was financial. The question was. If there was a financial aspect of this, would it make it more successful? Oh, okay, I got to mix that. Uh, nah, I, I think it would also break break even. Uh, you know, I, I read somewhere uh, recently um, that homosexual males, because they didn't have that masculine principle developed in them from their fathers, that they go out and they do all this fag them chasing male attention. This is real skeevy and sick. But by the process of the economic distribution in, in, in this country, you have fags. I mean, look, you got a fag as the leader of the free world. So the economics of it make these fag males appear to be masculine providers, breadwinners. If we can, if we can level that with masculine breadwinners that ain't nobody's fag, and have beautiful black wives and beautiful black babies, I think then we can start to make that uh, a viable option for, for brothers that are, that, that are looking to get ahead in life. So you think that, that the economics could help? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, uh, Brother Samir. Hmm. <laughs> it's a very good, good point. <laughs> it's a hard question, isn't it? <laughs> Uh, I would honestly have to say it, it really it, it would depend on the dynamics at that particular time because you have some who just don't give a damn about the economics and just you know just just want to do what has to be done. Then you have those who are you know in great need of the economics and want to do what has to be done. For someone like me, now I will have to speak for myself on this one. I don't give a damn about no money. It don't make no difference whether I'm broke or su- superiorly rich. A fag got to go. <laughs> Bottom let, line. Let, and let me go, because you just, you and Brother Body Shot, Brother True, actually everybody just made a point to take me to another place. Okay. Oh, uh, Jeannie, can I just say one more thing before you leave the topic, bro? Uh, the, you know, the financial question? Okay. okay. I just want to say, from my experience, you know, just expounding on my answer some more, you know, I've been mobilizing in the community for, you know, some, a couple of years now. And brothers and sisters won't mobilize to get some, some free food out, some, some cans. And, you know, the first answer is because, you know, I ain't got it. Or, yo, true, I would, but, you know, what's, what's that going to do for me? So we're talking about organizing a mass movement against fags, which most people accept, the damn preacher's a fag. And I, I'm not trying to sound negative, family. I'm just being realistic, and I'm not saying no, what everybody else is saying or doing is not realistic. I'm just saying from the experience that, I, that I've come to, people are like, yo, I, I'm trying to get this bread, true. That, that sounds good, but I ain't got time for that. You know what, though? When you say it that way, I'm going to be honest, it's almost contradictory to what you're saying. I'm going to tell you why I say that. Mm-hmm. On the one hand, you're saying that if there was a financial thing associated with it, people would feel more comfortable doing it because it's a viable way to live. But 
The only thing about that is you're saying that the stuff these people do, that they do have enough money to give a free um, uh, 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 piece of breakfast or something like that or, or canned food, but they won't do it because it don't have nothing in it for them. So what it really sounds like is they're not doing it not because they can't. They're not doing it because they don't see how it helps them, and they're not interested in helping our race, which goes to almost to the point that I'm not saying that you're wrong. I'm not saying it's wrong because I, I do believe – I'm in agreement with you that there's got to be some kind of economic component because for a brother who truly wants to get in but who will really get in, but in order for him to get in to be viable, he has to leave whatever he's doing now to do this because whatever kind of job he got, if he did this, he would come under fire. He's got to be able to take care of his family. Exactly. He's willing to do it, that kind of dynamic there. But but to Brother King Samir's point, I think to what Bomani was saying and Lady Shabazz, if a person don't really believe in doing this, you can't really pay them to do it because they'll be standing up against the devil. Is money really going to make them stand up against the devil? Oh, no, I'm not saying that they'll mobilize and get paid. I'm saying that people's priorities is in getting paid. So, right. right, but I'm saying if, they, if their priorities aren't getting paid, if they can get some money, and somebody, again, somebody has some, uh, some stuff in the background. If you have something in the background going on and you can hear it, please. You put your phone on mute until you on so that we can um so we don't hear it in the background. Um, if people's priorities are in um the getting paid, then you ain't really gonna get a person who would that's their priority to do this work because this ain't really the priority. The priority this has meaning, and and it, it's taking me to my next piece anyway because it's going perfectly. <laughs> and I, I mean, it didn't go perfectly. It came up because of what we are talking about. Now, let me, let me ask this, because I think this might answer the question and kind of pull it all together. Then we go to our phone line. I know I keep saying we're going to do it. This is a really, really good dialogue. All right, look. Are we at the point now where realistically, since the masses of our people, let's keep it real, they're Negroes, and some of them are comfortable Negroes, would it be better to start a movement there or would a movement within the pan Africanist community to say, we're going to clean the Pan-Africanist movement out of the fags and say that in order to be Pan-Africanist, black nationalists, there are certain standards that we have to have. Would that be a more feasible thing to do? Since when you're talking Pan-Africanist and black nationalists, we should already have people who are not just financially interested in doing this, but they actually have some principles. And if they don't, then they shouldn't be here anyway. Would that be a more viable way to do it? Instead of trying to go out and, and do it, should we say, okay, Maybe the problem is so massive now that we can't outstretch our arms everywhere. But we're going to say this. This is what Pan-Africanism is. This is what black nationalism is. For all of y'all that are sick of being with these fags, you can come on over here. We don't have no fags, no pedophiles around. We deal with them if they come in our home. But don't put Malcolm X's name on nothing with no fags in it. You're going to have to see us. You're going to have to meet us. You're going to have to see us face to face. Don't have no... Uh, faggots coming in doing no African dance with no drums, we're going to storm that place, we're going to shut you down. You're not going to have no more events with no fags, put nothing African on it. Ain't no fags when we wearing no African clothing. You be a Negro, you want to be a fag, you want to be a pedophile, you go into the normal Negro streets, if we, if we run into you, we do, we don't. But don't you dare come into this community. Is that feasible? Is that realistic? Is that a better approach than just talking about it in general, or is that not feasible? Lady Shabazz. Um, well, first I want to say that as far as um, to True's point, I think that the economics is a major point in nobody's going to listen to you if they're hungry. You do have to get people fed first. I just don't think that that's going to make a difference in the morality of people, but it is a first step, but the morality is something we have to deal with. Um, I almost wonder if the uh, nationalist community is too far gone and we have to do kind of what you've done is create a whole new phrase, uh, Haitianist or, or whatever you want to call us, and just start over because they are in it so deep. Um, I'm not sure that we have the resources to take it back like that. Um, I mean, maybe we do, but it's, it's they they so deep. I don't know. It's almost like we got to start our own thing and let them just go to hell. Whoa, Brother Bomani. I think that's the place where we have to start. I mean, we drawing a line in the sand that we on this side, and if you're on that side, you can't be on this side. You can't fight. You 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 can't you can't serve two masses. So it's like, if you're gonna be a homo. You cannot be considered a nationalist, an African. So I think, you know, the house cleaner has to start within the nationalist uh, or so-called nationalist movement. Anybody, like you said, that, that's attaching Malcolm's photo or Dr. Khaled's photo and associating with anything 
dealing with homosexuality, they got to be dealt with. I think this is the first place where we need to start. Mm. Uh, uh, Brother Body Shot. Hey, uh, my elders always told me that you got to sweep your own front step before you sweep mine. So mm. we, we def- cleaning, clean house, cleaning houses is definitely in order. Matter of fact, it's spring. We can use the spring cleaning and dispose of these fags and these funny funnies. I mean, it's nothing more disgusting than seeing a fag in a dashiki and mud club. I had to learn very, very early on, uh, Dale Jones said that there's a difference between African garb and African costumes. And at this point, I don't even want to see a fag in an African costume. If you got an unk, I might just snatch the unk off your neck. That's, that's how I'm trying. I'm, I'm going to be very disrespectful. I don't want fags in my space. And when I started going to the, these events and these study groups and I see fags, it, it's, it's, it's is, there's, there's going to be a scene. That's, that's just that's just where we got to take it. But early about the economics, if I could get on that piece right quick. Where I was coming from as far as showing the youth that they can be economically, uh, they can be financially stable and independent by, by choosing to live a clean and moral life. Uh, when I went down to Norfolk to do some building with the students down the Norfolk campus, uh, there were some guys out playing football. I mean, Six five, two thirty. These some big corn fed brothers, and I'm out there building with them. I'm like, we got to talking about all the actors and entertainers that get put in a dress. These brothers, it was like seventy percent of them. It was a consensus that they would put on a dress if the price was right. And I'm like, these are just young brothers. They don't really know the politics or or the morality to it. They just like show me the money. And so that's that's where I was coming from with with, with my uh, position earlier. Mm. Um, brother, uh, uh, um, uh, brother True. Yes, sir. Uh, you know the elder Jack Felder once asked me. He said, "If you got a you got a choice, you got a cracker and a Negro. Who are you gonna shoot first? So real quick, I said the cracker. He said, "Nope, shoot the Negro first because the Negro gonna shoot you for the cracker anyway." Mm. So. I say that to say we start with us, not with them, because we already know their allegiance. So definitely start home. Mm. Okay, uh, King Samir. I said we pour acid on all of them. <laughs> Period. Yes, brother. It has to start within the so-called nationalist conscious community. It has to start within the so-called RBG community because a lot of these dudes are scared as hell of the white man. They defend homosexuality. If you go in their house, you'll probably see a damn rainbow flag over top their bed. Yes, we have to start within this so-called revolutionary community. You're damn right because a lot of these dudes condone it and a lot of these feminist black women who call themselves conscious, condone it. And we got to deal with that as well. This damn feminist movement and the conscious movement. It's so nothing me, but white women's liberalism. Yes, right. we got to start right in the home and then work our way outside. Until mm-hmm. we get the fags out of the conscious community, we can't really talk about getting the fags out of the average community. Mm-hmm. I say. I say. I'm with you on that. So let me ask you this. And I'm just going to ask you this, then we're going to go to our phone line. But, King Samir, since you're the only person here that really is part, uh, 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 integral part of another major institution, and I'm not asking you to make a decision for that institution. I'm just asking you this question. In general, it's, it's a hypothetical question, not one to make a decision for the organization. But if, if war on the horizon, if we start reaching out to nationalist groups and say, look, we need to have a, a coalition or, or some kind of agreement some kind of, I don't know what you want to call it, where we say maybe a, 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 a white sex day or, or, or a black family day or something where the whole purpose is for black families to come out and us to say we declare as pan-Africanists, black nationalists, we are against homosexuality, we don't want this in our space, we are taking a platform against this. Do you think black militant organizations would see the need Your to conference recording has stopped. 
Brother, Brother this Smith? conference is being recorded. Yes, sir. Can you repeat that last part again, Black? Do you think that organizations would actually do that? Yes, sir. And uh, as an international officer, I can say the new Black Panther. Yes, sir. Can you repeat that last part again, Black? Do you think that organizations would actually do that? Yes, sir. And uh, as an international officer, I can say the new Black Panther Party stands one million percent against homosexuality. The Pan-Africanist Congress stands one million percent against the rape of our little uh, of our black women and children and against homosexuality. All right, then, then, then brothers, everybody on the phone, that's something. We're going to go to our phone lines now, but that's something we got to really talk about. We got to see, we don't all have to get together and work together, like, on everything. But I think this is something that is non-political. It's really more social about the survival of our race, that every Pan-African group that truly is Pan-Africanist, we can all agree that we're going to rid our ranks of homos and pedophiles, that we're going to declare openly that homos and pedophiles are not welcome, the homosexuality and pedophilia is not part of our communal, uh, our community, or any part of our, 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 our history or culture, and that we see it as a war to be fought. We want to eradicate this behavior out of our communities. And each group can figure out how they want to do that, but if we stood together, uh, not even in the same place at the same time, but all came out against homosexuality in our own spaces, then it would tell everybody, we don't care what your position is. If you are a fag or a pedophile, stay the hell out of Pan-Africanism or it's a fight. It's a war. You can go to the Negroes might tolerate that in their, their, their civil rights marches in their churches, but we're not Negroes. So, so it's not going to be a nonviolent uh, debate. So uh, with that said, I want to go to the phone lines. Thank everybody for holding on. I want to tell you again, phone number 760-569-7676. That's 760-569-7676. Participation code 948656 pound. That's 948 948- Six five six pound. Let me go to seven seven three zero. You live on Warner Horizon. Good evening, fellas, and good evening, um, ladies. As I'm talking to tonight. How you doing, brother? One thing I would say. I mean, there's a lot of things on my mind in regards to the topic because this is a nerdy deep topic. But one thing, in particular, I have to say this in regards to correcting or find ways to correcting this type of. Academic, epidemic we have in our midst. One thing I find interesting is we we talk about education. And you, you made everything we, we did. You, brief, you talked about us a week ago. I say one of the things we have to start put, uh, put down is we, we really want to waste time with these institutional educations because we know now because the attack now is is increased by by putting them in any type of school system if we're not monitoring, watching what's going on. They are told. Most of the people that's in the school said they, they're going to do this, and they're going to teach this, and whereas most people like it or not, it's not a oh, way around. So they say, okay, fine. So that means now most black people, either they're going to deal with it or not, should now start making the, the, the initiative now say, since that's an attack on my child, when you try to force a teaching that we know we don't accept, we start to pull them out of the school system. Brother? Okay. Okay, well, yeah, yeah, the brother said that we got to start pulling our children out of the school system. Um, he's saying that since we know that they're pushing on our children, that's something we need to do. Anybody have a comment on that? Hold on. This is the last year my baby's going to public school, brother. I, uh, I agree with you 100%. Mm. Is there a particular reason? Um, besides the la- poor education and the degeneracy the, the that my daughter in Zynga is coming home uh, with, there was an incident where, uh, you know, another child, you know, approached her and uh, told her that all the children in third grade are gay. Uh, this happened uh, last year. This year we didn't have any uh, situation like that. We should have pulled her out of there last year. But, um, yeah, it's just, it's a, it's a, I mean, it's poison. We all know. We all read, you know, Miseducation of Negro and all the other books. It's poison. Public school system, the charter school system, it's poison. If they're not going to one Horizon University, get them up out of there, man. Mm. Anybody else? Uh, I want to say that uh, the school 
is just a cesspit of, of backlessness. My my daughter at the age of two is going to her early childhood development, and one a couple of the students even had either two fathers or two mothers, and it got wow. to the point where, you know, when they were singing songs like the moms on the bus go shh, 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 and the fathers on the bus, it became they they completely did away with the gender specifics of the matter and could only say parents. And uh, they they had a Donuts for Dad's Day and a Muffins for Mom's Day, and that completely got turned to some harsh pause parent celebration. This is definitely a war for the minds of our babies. You know, that's really deep what you just said because I can say I do remember uh, just this Monday, we had a program uh, talking about these uh, the salacious homo, homosexual nature of this country and uh, this insidious fagdom. And uh, the brother called up from Brooklyn and said, I mean, he was he was absolutely on fire. And the brother said, look, man, they got a letter coming to my house talking about they're going to teach my five-year-old daughter about AIDS, which, of course, includes the discussion of homosexuality and sexuality. Her, his five-year-old daughter, and basically, you, you know, unless you – Basically, if you come up here and scream bloody murder, they're going to force your child to be um, taught about homosexuality at five years old. And this is his daughter, man. He's like, man, if I would let this happen to my daughter, how can I be a responsible black man? He, you can hear the brother about to snap. So we said, no, you know, don't snap, brother. But do go down there and take care of the situation. And that's when we start saying, we, and this is what we said then, we, we got to move close to each other. We got to get in, 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 in lock up in community. That are anti- they got to be pan African, it's anti fag. Honestly, we we really got to get to the point where it's like, look, no religions, no Christianity, Islam, Judaism, none of that stuff. We want black, pan Africanists, pro black, anti white people who believe in our ancestors and the creator and protecting our interests and destroying white supremacy. And if you got anything else, other agendas, you stay back. We just want them. The, 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 those who believe in the Second Amendment. You might not have believed in none of the other crackers amendments, but that second one where you say you can hold your gun, you got to believe in that because, man, these, these, this is a real warfare. So uh, I definitely know that uh, doing something out of schools. Thank you for that call, bro. That's a very important call and a good point. 4910, you live on Warner Horizon. Black power, black cowards. Peace, peace. Brother Hulu. Like, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, First of all, I just wanted to say the caller who called in, man, before – Put some goddamn bass in your voice, black man. We're dealing with black manhood here. We're defending black manhood here. All right? You made some great points, but, we, you know, you got to put some bass in your voice. A lot of people can't hear you. I also want to talk about the agenda of these goddamn, you know, the, the crackers, the globalists, to push their feminist agenda to destroy the black manhood. It's a fear of black planet. As we know, they're putting these chemicals in the water to feminize the black men. You know what I mean? They, they're doing a lot of different things. Um, so that they continue, you know, it's the fear of their, their, their genetic annihilation. And this is why they're pushing their homosexual agenda, because they don't want us to reproduce like that. So they know what they're doing. Um, we're not strong black panthers no more. They're trying to push us to make us soft pink panthers. I think that we, we definitely, you know, um, we need to push this and, and, and attack it, you know, with no goddamn apology. You know, and we got to be the real heroes. So we can, we got to throw that, put that line in the sand like the brother said before, and, you know, there's no goddamn apology more, no more. You know, we've got to be death to the Negro, you know what I mean, the birth to the black God, and the way we got to do that is build and destroy. we got to destroy the fuckery, the foolishness, the botchamans, you know what I mean, and, 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 that, and that, that, that whole ideology because, you know, it, it's been perpetuated to us because they've been raped. We know that, you know, when doing slavery when we were raped and the motherfucker, that whole situation, and, it's, you know, it's been, you know, entrained and ingrained in us that, um, you know, some of the brothers, is, it, they, that, they like that. Down here in the South now, I see them wearing slippers. Um, seven out of, maybe nine out of ten dudes is wearing slippers. They feminize now. They say the government. Ho, 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 slow down, slow, 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 slow down, bro. Wait, wait, ho, ho, bro. Ho, ho, slow down. You telling me in the Deep South, brothers are walking around with slippers? Yes, sir. All right, uh, down here, I'm down in the, um, you know, down here in Fort Lauderdale, Miami area, and it could be cold. As it was cold, uh, it'll be, let's say, 50 degrees outside. They're coming outside in some goddamn slippers. All right, they got on some tight, skinny jeans and some slippers. 
all right, sandals. But we know that when they lock you up, they take away your shoes, all right, and they're giving you what they call slippers or what these niggas call Negroes call oh, slides. Hey, we, we don't use the N-word here, bro. I, I didn't mean niggas. I meant Negroes, all right, yes, because, sir. you know, yes, sir, excuse me. All right, um, but they're wearing what you call slides because they mentally slid down. When they once they come back out, they're still wearing those slides, as they call them in the street. All right, but um, this government will push their um, homosexual agenda um, and tell it's okay for them to, you know, a, a man and a man or a woman and a woman to marry, but they won't want me to hold responsibility and have another wife and, and so forth like that. And and you know, I just want to. Have- let me ask you a question. You're in Fort Lauderdale. I gotta really ask this. Give me, give me your perspective because you're there. You're on the ground. If you had to put a percentage on the the number of brothers that you see, and you're 100 percent certain that they had a sexual, like you know that dude is solid, and then the dudes you either ain't sure or you know they fags. Like a dude coming out in slippers, I'm gonna automatically say I don't care who he is. He's a, he's a suspect if he got on slippers. It's grown men. I, I even show it to the ladies. I'm like, look, look at the destruction of the black man. Look at the feminization of the black man out here. Right. First give, of all, they, give me, give me, give me. They give me, don't give sag them like how they sag them before. They right. sag them so far that their joint is showing. All right. They, you know, they they whole, you know, boxer shoe. It's underneath the sack or the scrotum. All right. When they sagging it now. All right. How low can you go? They really doing it like now. All right, so they've so gone. Give me, give, give, me, give me your percentage of how many 100% solid black men? I would say about 85%. 85% no, no. of them. No, no, I said how many percentage is 100% solid straight black men? Well, I only can speak for myself, black man. You know what I mean? I know what I do. You know what I mean? I love the ladies and the ladies love me. So at the end of the day, you know what I mean? I can't speak for everyone else. All right, that, that, that's all I'm, I'm saying from your site, when you're looking around, how many dudes have you had to put money on saying, yeah, that's a straight dude? You know, usually you can tell a straight dude. How many dudes yes, you look around do you feel? What percentage of dudes feel straight? I'd say it could be about, you know, 60, 40. You know, because I am in the South, and, they, and you know, down here in Miami, they push it, you know, because, um, you know, Miami and they botch him on coach. They, 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 they do push it. All right, they, they they push it, you know, um, all with, you know, the, it's okay to wear pink and, you know, like <laughs> I was saying, it, they push it a lot. All right, so, down as even in Atlanta to, to Miami, it's a lot of the the, the, the colors. Come on. I mean, they color yeah. that brother, brother, brother. Would you say 60 straight or you say 60 fag? 60% fag or 60% straight, 40% fag? I'm going to have to say 60% straight. You know, I'm just trying to give my brothers the benefit of the doubt. All right, and that's the way I feel being a, a 100% heterosexual black man. And that's all I would have to say, dear brother, and black power. <clears throat> Thank you, brother. Thank you. Uh, man, the brother's telling us we know that on the East Coast and the Central of the country, we know that in Atlanta is bad, but this brother is really almost on the border down there by Cuba. And he's got a stretch to say he thinks. Six out of the ten guys might be straight. That's not good, brothers and sisters. Wow, does that does that strike anybody? Is, 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 is does that hurt anybody on on the line? Is that is that is that bizarre to anyone on on, on the line? It's no. not bizarre to me at all, uh, because I was just I, I actually have the Constitution of Zimbabwe, and as we were sitting down with Mugabe's uh, staff, they were telling us how, you know, they were really, really, how the British and, and America is really trying to push this homosexuality there. And he gave um, some little statistics. And he was saying a lot of brothers and sisters in Africa get arrested for kissing in public, a, a, a man and a woman, you know, for kissing in public, but uh, they don't get any, if, if there's two men kissing in public, they don't get arrested. They don't get no fine. They don't get no slap on the wrist. They don't get anything. They just keep right on. You know, the police just keep right on going around what they do. Um, so, yes, th- this thing is serious, man. It- it's very serious, and it's spreading all throughout of Africa like wildfire. Wait, 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 wait. And I, I know what you're saying is true because I just got back from Uganda, and the Ugandans are, I mean, the people in the street in Uganda are, are right on the edge of saying, we're going to kill all these fags. You're not going to. We're not going to tolerate it. They, they, they're not tolerant of it. But here's my question. 
Okay, I know that it's bad on the East Coast, but we're talking about the deep south. Now, we're talking about you can't get no deeper south than, than, the, than the south Florida. He's telling us in south Florida is almost on a 50-50 where he's looking around every day and he thinks everybody's a fag. That's not good, man. That means, that means nope. it's a pandemic, epidemic, off the charts that is nationwide where literally the fags in our community or the suspect fag, which if you're a suspect fag, you're pretty much a fag, is, is outnumbering us. Can I, can I, can I just say something real quick, brother? Yes, sir. This is, this is why I said 85% of black men are fags. Let me, let me just say, though, I'm, I'm, the only thing that shocks me about it is that he says 60-40. I mean, my brother Taino was down in Miami, and he literally begged me because so, he had to get out of there because he was working around so many fags that he moved. He came back to New York City, no job, no nothing, said I had to get out of there because it was too many fags. He literally left Miami because it was so many fags. So, so he didn't leave because of a job. He, his sole reason for leaving, he said, it's too many fags. Kevin. It's too many fags. The sole way reason why he left Miami. Fags. Way too many in Miami. He so, left. So, so you saying black fags. He, he wasn't talking about cracker fags. He's talking about black. Black, uh, uh, so-called Hispanic, white. Yep. He said they was everywhere. He said it, he they, was working. They got, Korean, they got Korean fag gangs in Miami. He was working around so many fags. He said, yo, I'm, he said, I, I, I don't even feel safe at work. He said, I feel, he said, I feel like I'm being sexually harassed at work every day. Like fags just everywhere that he works with, that he was working with. He said, the, the supervisor, the boss, the people in the stock room, whatever. Everybody was gay. And he was like, yo, I got to get out of here. I'm coming back to New York. I don't, have, I said, I don't know how, what I'm going to do when I get there, but I'm leaving. I said, brother, come on. <laughs> get up out of there. And you know, what's so, you know what's so phenomenal about what you said? And, and we come in 3145, we coming to you next. Um, I actually had a brother. I met him. Uh, I was on a train in the morning in Washington, D.C., going to work, going to the plantation. And it was this dude. He's about 15 years old. I'm not exaggerating. I got to go seven stops. It takes 20 minutes once you get on. And it's a 20-minute ride for them seven stops. I'm not exaggerating, brothers and sisters. This dude had one of them mirror things that women put up to their face, the little mirror things they looking when they put their um, makeup on. He was putting some lipstick on or some gloss dip, or some whatever you call it. Like it wasn't the color, but it was glossy, whatever. And this little fag sitting there like for like three or four stops. Before This is before he did it the whole seven stops, but, I mean, the three or four stops, I was just staring at him. And I was like, I should go slap this fag but he was sitting next to another little, like, 14, 15-year-old fag. like two or three fags. But he's staring in the thing, putting the lip stuff on. So, like, I look over at this other brother that's sitting down in the chair, and he just starts shaking his head. I said, man, this, this, is, this is bad. And he said, man, bad. He said, look, man, he said, I'm going back to California. I said, what? He said, I can't stay in this area. I said, you, you're, you're going to California to get away from homosexuality. He said, man, he said, let me see how bad it is. He said, bro. I was down on U Street, and I went down there, and it was all these brothers waiting in line to get into the club. They said I had been like 100, 200 of them out there. So I was like, man, it got to be so many honeys up in this zone. He said, so I did like I always do. I cut the line. I said, yeah, he a DC homie. He said, so I cut the line, right? He said, so I got out there, and I was going out. I said, man, dang, man, there's a lot of honeys up in this joint. So when he got to the thing, he was saying that to the guy that was at the door. He's like, uh, nah, nah. So he looks in, he sees all these dudes. He's like, where the honeys are? They, they must be upstairs or something? He's like, Nah, brother, it's our alternative night. And he said, what? He said, yeah, it's, it's alternative night. So then he looked back around. He said, all these dudes look straight. But then he started noticing how they was talking to each other. And he started looking in the door and seeing all these dudes, like, like holding, just gumping. I mean, it was, it, was, it was a gump fest. It was just a, it was a fag. We're talking hundreds. I mean, that's about one or two. Hundreds. So many that he thought it was a, 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 a club full of women. He said, so I'm talking to him. And he said that it's so bad in D.C., now, he's a younger brother. He was like 23 or 24, I think. So he said, it's so bad. He had lived in California. He came back to D.C. He said, it's hard for him to find a woman because they're all lesbians. But he said, he wouldn't marry a woman from this area. No way in the world he would marry a woman from this area because she's probably a lesbian. And he told me straight up, he said, man, I want to have children. You know, I'm, I'm not, I don't want to be waiting forever to have children. I'm going to move back to California so I can get a you know, woman and have a child. I couldn't raise a child here in this area. I was like, is that bad? He said, nah, bro. There's no, there's no possible way I can raise a child in this gay environment in this city. Now, this is a young man. This ain't like my age where I'm appalled. He's saying that the fags outnumber the real brothers. 
Well, as a woman, I can say I agree with the waitress that you guys met the other day. Anytime I see more than two men together, I automatically assume they're gay until proven otherwise. So, okay, so then I got to ask you this question, sis. Is it so? Is it because you would want Horizon, or is it really that the fagdom, the 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 the, the malicious fagdom is so bad now that you really suspect a black man being a fag before you suspect him being a man? I mean, is, is that real? Yeah, I mean, it's the way the brothers carry themselves. I mean, I really started noticing it last year when I visited D.C. and Baltimore because I'm at the harbor, and I'm like, why are all these dudes, like two dudes together at the harbor? Like, that's something you do when you're on a date with a female. Like, why everywhere I'm going is two dudes together? And and ever since then, when I'm looking at two dudes together, usually something's wrong with either <laughs> pants sagging, one of them wearing pink, one of them a little too manicured. Maybe I'm paranoid, but unless I know you or until it's proven otherwise, if I see two dudes together, especially now they be walking all close. Like I'm used to manly men who they like space, and, you know, they don't walk all close together. If I see that, I just assume you're gay. But, but I mean, anywhere you are in the country, you, you're saying that. Anywhere. Right, but I'm saying black men are so gay now that when you see black males together, before you assume that they're straight, you assume they're gay. Yes, because I'm not used to seeing dudes. I mean, dudes don't are not the way they are now. Dudes don't walk close together. Dudes don't chill out at the harbor together. They might double date, but but don't no dude be walking close together. The same thing in Detroit. I'm sitting there on the um what they call a people mover, take you around downtown or whatever, and I'm seeing these little teenage boys hugged up on each other, lips looking all glossy, one of them leaning on the other like they're in love. I mean, it's disgusting. Yeah. So I always assume they're gay. Let's go to 3145. You're live on Warner Horizon. Are there any 100% heterosexual black men left? Black pride, black power. Uhuru, can I be heard? You can be heard, my brother. All right. Uh, I can only give you an experience that I had uh, that gave me my wake-up call as far as the faggots, you know what I'm saying, in, uh, in the conscious community. Uh, about 2010, I believe, I went to Atlanta to attend a, um, a black power conference, my first time ever going to an event like that because I'm from a small town in Georgia. And uh, took my family, wife, daughter, we all there just happy. And I get up to address the panel when it's Q&A time, and I ask a question, and, and, and the, I don't remember the exact question, but I know I was, I was prefacing the question by letting them know that um, I was going to school and I was just letting them know how hard it is for a straight black male in college to succeed because you got all of these, this preferential treatment for these soft Negroes, for these faggots, you know what I'm saying, and how these teachers don't like a, a strong black male, especially the white ones. They can't stand a strong black male. Well, I asked the question, and the first, I, it was actually, I, was, I, I was actually directing the question to Dr. Leonard Jeffries because he was there. Um, and some dude was on the panel. I don't know this guy, but he gets up, and he's like, I'm going to take it from me. I'm going to take it. I'm going to answer the question. So he gets up, and he just started attacking me. You know, in front of my family, in front of everybody, he just started attacking me, just going in on me like, well, you know, we can't help you with that, and, you know, you got to do this, and you got to do that on your own. I'm sitting there like, what? Like, what's going on? I ain't understand what was going on. You know, I, I, I just kind of, like, stopped listening after a while because I just did not, I did not understand why this guy was attacking me. So in hindsight, I kind of feel that the dude was, he had to be gay because I'm going, I'm going in on the faggot. And he gets up and he was kind of like mad, like salty about the situation. I'm like, I don't know about that. But that, I, when I look in the hindsight, I think I had my first experience because I didn't know it existed in the conscious community. I didn't know nothing about no faggotry, none of that in the conscious community. I thought we was all good to go. So as far as uh, knowing uh, 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 about that, I, I got my wake up. I, wake, I got my wake up called in. Um, Let me ask you this: in, in, in reference to that same situation, what did Jeffrey say? Oh, you see, he's not not that. Okay, I'm glad you asked that because he he gets up after the fact and he was like, "Well, nah, young brother." He was like, "Yeah, I'm a um, I'm gonna get with you on that question." You know, he was kind of like assuring me, like, "Don't really listen to that guy." Like that guy is like. 
he's like a bum or whatever. We, I didn't know who the dude was. And I'm saying, it's some, it's some, it's some powerful scholars up there, and I never even seen this guy. So he said that then after that, um, uh, the uh, 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 I don't know his first name, but his name last name is Shabazz. He's the uh, the, uh, the I think he's like the, the top guy in the Black Panthers. Okay. Right? Uh, he gets up and he was like, "Hey, we it shouldn't be no faggotry going on, you know, in, in the country community." I'm like, "Yeah, that's what I'm talking about." So that's what kind of let me think that maybe somebody had told him that the dude who addressed me felt some kind of way or whatnot, because I said what I had to say about, you know, about, about anti, I don't even call it homosexual. I call it anti-sexuality because the mouth and the booty hole is not no sexual organ. That junk mm-hmm. is sexual, de- that junk is DUNC and, and perversion. So <laughs> when, I, when I went that route, I figured that that's who he was talking about, the dude who probably went to complain to him, saying, oh, you got to do it, and they're asking questions, you know, this and homo, and I'm saying, like, oh, man, I know, I know it's Atlanta, Georgia. I don't live in Atlanta. But I know it's Atlanta. I know it's, it's real ugly out there, but I didn't know it was like that. So I was like, dang, that's my wake-up call. And Gee, wow. could, uh, if I could respond to that. Jeannie? Yeah, go ahead. Uh, my brother, this is King Samir. I'm the international field marshal of the new Black Panther Party, sir. That particular yes, sir. convention... Uh, the Black Power Conference was actually sponsored by us in Atlanta at 2010. Um, if you can recall, brother, do you remember what this particular, I'll just say it, fag looked like? He was he was he was an older he was an older guy. He was like he had short hair, was kind of gray. Uh, dang, um, he just I mean oh man he just he he looked soft. He looked like the softest dude up there. I mean, that's all I can say. I don't really remember no details, but he was the softest dude up there. I tell you what, I will. I I, I think I remember who you're talking about. Um, but I'm not going to apologize for no fact. But uh, <laughs> um, unfortunately, brother, you know that had to happen. You know, you had to experience that at a Black Power conference sponsored by the New Black Panther Party. As I stated earlier, we are one million percent against, as you call, anti-sexuality. You understand what I'm saying? We don't play that. We don't lay that. None of that. So, oh yeah, y'all um, made that clear. Y'all made that clear when y'all y'all made that clear. Now I know that. <laughs> yes, sir. So I just kind of want, I you know, I just wanted to clear that up to the and listening it, audience because you know we may have it. some fags listening on the line now who will be trying let to let me throw some stuff in the game. Yeah, let me jump in here. Uh, this is very important, and I, well, brother, I, I'm really glad you brought this up, and I'm glad you were here, King, with this. And I think, but I think we need to all understand something. These fags are like roaches, and when Kellogg's makes a cereal box, they didn't put no roaches in there necessarily. But if there's roaches around, and you go in, open up your cabinet, and you open up some roaches in that cereal box, it don't mean that Kellogg's put them in there. What I'm saying is. The nationalist community and the pan-Africanist community, to the, to the point that the brother's making, even if it's like war on the horizon. I, okay, I know these people on the phone right now ain't no facts because I know them, but I'm saying when you start to grow and you get more people, like the New Black Panther Party, and you have conferences, you, you, you don't know who's a fag all the time coming in the door. And so what happens is, and it really is the, the crux of what we're talking about, kind of going back to what we were saying earlier, we got to really make it uncomfortable for a fag, like, 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 this is what we have to do. We have to have an agreement. If we're at a black power conference and somebody starts getting up, even if they're not a fag, if it's a female or a male, and they start pumping some pro-fag propaganda, we say, security, get this promo sexual out of here. Ma'am, I'm sorry, you're not invited. You got to go. It's not a debate. You're promo sexual. Get out. And, and sorry, young man. You know, your, your son, don't, don't, don't put your hands on the young man. But go ahead with your mom. Let's go around. Thank you, man, for coming. It ain't no debate. We ain't having no promo sexuals. Definitely no, no homos and no dykes. And they got to feel that way because you get a brother like this coming in. Now, imagine if, if he'd have met the fag, not knowing he was a fag, thinking in this movement, nobody's a fag. So he got cool with somebody, found out that that fool was a fag. He might have thought right, that the new Black Panthers was a bunch of fags because this homo done slid up in there. We exactly. got to start taking this thing seriously because none of us should get that, that heat on us because we don't know who the fags are. But. If we don't put the fags out, that's on us. So go ahead, brother. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to jump in there like that. My brother, yes, go ahead. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you right on, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I feel everything y'all talking about, you know what I'm saying? I want to thank you, though. I've been following you, um, um, Irritated Genie, for some years now, uh, and I want to thank you for um, you be sending out emails. I be getting them emails. Yes, and um, I've seen this last one, and um, I, let me tell you how it went. Now, I, I'm at my computer. I seen your email. I read your email. I click the link. I'm in the room by myself now. These, I'm talking about, the, when, I, when, 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 when the video played, I thought I was in the twilight zone. Like, I ain't even know, I ain't know what was going on. Then my old lady walked in, and I'm sitting there like, I don't, I'm trying to hurry up, you know what I'm saying, like, to minimize it, because I don't want her to think that I'm watching this for entertainment or something like that. So I had to show her so she can see that, you know, it was from you, and it was just filthy. And I'm sitting there like, man, I, ain't, I, I had a headache. Like, I was lightheaded. Like, I. I didn't know what was going on with me, so I appreciate you sending that, though, the show. Yeah, and, and, and with the brother talking about 2012 Gay Atlanta, the Gay Pride um, Festival, they had these, and, okay, for anybody that remembers, about a year ago, uh, me and Sister Naftari were driving down the street. She made me take a video of these faggies doing, like, women's high school, like, um, cheerleader stuff. And we, we put it up on YouTube. Of course, they shut our YouTube down when they did it. But people saw that, and they went around the Internet. What we did not know is that this was a national thing where they have a competition every year. And, I mean, some of the most heinous, disgusting fags, they wear, like, like little um, pantyhose-type things and bra-type stuff, and they do these, these female Beyonce-type dance competition in Atlanta. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, bro, would you say it was at least two, 3,000 people out there? Yes, sir. It was, yes, sir. That, that really shocked me. When I'm sitting looking at this cloud, I'm like, man, this is ugly. And if y'all see it, we sent it out. Uh, if, you can, you can, I mean, if you really want to, I don't know if you want to, but you put in 2012 uh, Gay Pride Festival in Atlanta, and you'll find it. And uh, I don't know if you want to find it, but they are really, they are really taking our children and taking our youth from us. So uh, it's, it's serious out there. And um, So what's your answer to the question, brother? You called in. Are there any straight up heterosexual brothers left, and what would you say the percentage of heterosexual black men in America is right now? <sighs> Man, at the rate we're going, I'm going to say, I'm going to say, uh, man, I'm going to say about, maybe about one-third. I'm going to say about one-third. I'm going to say, yeah, I'm going to say about one-third. I'm going to say about two-thirds of these jokers running around here now. is One-third one of them openly and the other third of them just straight up, you know, the dirty Negro, just down low with it, you know what I'm saying? So I'm going to say about one third or less. So you're saying about one out, of, one out of these three dudes is somebody we can try to build with. The rest of these bombers is, 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 is let, them, let, them go to the, let them go to the other side because we can't, we can't save them. I mean, I, I'm going to tell you like this. When I was in, I just got out of the military like maybe a year ago. When I was in, I was in the reserve. In my unit, what really, what, really, what really let me know what was going on is the soldiers I was getting in who were coming into my unit, you know, and, and, and coming up under me. I'm getting young soldiers, you know what I'm saying, and, and, and these are dudes, and I meet them, and, 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 and normally they be like, well, yeah, man, what, what, you know, what are chicks that? And they don't say it like that, but, you know, what, what are females that? These dudes weren't talking that talk. They look just like me now. They look straight, but they weren't talking that talk. So I'm sitting there like, what's going on? So... Uh, I come to find out that most of them was gay or, 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 or just, uh, what you call it, down low or whatnot, but they just kept coming in. I'm like, man, I'm talking about like out of 10, out of 10 young brothers that came in, maybe like one or two was not gay. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And, and the sister too, and the sister too. So that's kind of what made me get out because I'm like, you know what, look, this is nasty. And then on top of that, you know, when they repealed the don't ask, don't tell situation, uh, I think you you get you talk about this a lot. The whole you know at the workplace, how they you know they, uh, preferential treatment or whatever they be doing, they little supremacist junk they be doing at, at on the workplace. I started to feel that myself because I'm sitting there, I'm working there, and I'm noticing they get preferential treatment, and I'm noticing that now we getting supervisors in there who just is anti-sexual and, and, and buddy buddying up with the they they almost to the point where they fraternize. We got officers, you know what I'm saying, and uh, a commission officer, and you got either E1s or E2s. These officers, E1 and E2, they hanging out, going to the club, taking pictures. I'm sitting there like, I got to go now because 
I, I don't even fit in no more, and they probably going to discriminate and hate on me, which they did start doing, so I had to jet, I had to jet, so. Well, brother, we appreciate the support, and that's some real serious comments, because then when you start going to the military, that's very important, because we got to understand, while the heterosexual young boys are being, nobody's building them up to be strong men, but they may still be heterosexuals, but they're weak. But the fags are going into the military, learning the military. So now the most militant, armed, trained, violent people in our community are a bunch of fags, while our sons are being turned into a bunch of, even if they're heterosexual, weak, no position having, uh, isolated young black males in a dangerous environment where they're surrounded by fags who are, who are more prepared for war than them. That's serious talk right there, brother. We appreciate that, and uh, we definitely will see you on the battlefield. Indeed. All right, all right. Now, let me go back. I do want to say one thing real quick to Brother 4910. I really appreciate he did something, and he, and he got me, and I, I apologize for not doing this, but I like what that brother did. First thing he said is the dude that called before, put some damn bass in your voice. You know what? That's a new rule on, on One Horizon. I like the way that brother, he didn't come in and ask no questions. He didn't ask no permission. He said it straight up. He right. I, you know, it, man, I'm going to go ahead and do it. I know it's not going to be popular, and I'm going to let everybody come and say what he got to say, but I'm going to keep it real. I used to always wonder why Mr. Farrakhan used to talk with that whisperer, man. He used to drive me nuts. I never liked that big-ass cheesing grin smile he had. He used to drive me nuts. I remember my friend used to tell me his father used to be like, you know, beat him up. And like, they used to laugh. He'd say, stop skimming and grinning like a damn Chester cat. And I never forget he used to tell me that. Cush used to tell me that. And I never knew what a Chester cat was. I still don't know what a Chester cat is. But, like, when I used to see Mr. Farrakhan with that smile, that goddamn smile all the goddamn time, that viola and that smile, Especially around the crack, and it drove me nuts. Man. I, I don't like that. It's like a chest. I don't know what a chest cat is, but it's just a big ass grin. I don't like that. But then he would always talk like this. I ain't never liked that joint. And so, but I love Minister Farrakhan, but I never liked that, that, that whispering tone. I never liked it, man. It just, it just unnerved me, man. I don't even like talking about it. It, just, it creeped me out, man. Stop whispering, man. You're a goddamn man. Then Dr. Collett came out. I was like, oh, yeah, that's it right there. That's what I'm talking about. From now on, on one horizon, I love y'all, my brothers and sisters. I'm not saying everybody. You don't have to yell like me. But don't call up here with no shinny, henny, hissing, pissing type voice. Talk like a man. If you ain't talking like a man, you're getting cut off. Anybody, I'm sorry. Anybody got a problem with that? Am I going too far with this? <laughs> not, not at all, brother. First of all, yo, let me, let me, let me send a shout-out. Let me say salute to that brother, Yahoo. He's part of my Mayasa family. That's my brother down in... In Miami, so big ups to that, brother. But, Brother Jenny, let me just say something real quick. I, I hope you're not offended by what I'm about to say, man, but you be sending out them emails with them links and all that. I don't look at them, man. I really don't. Once I see the pictures, man, like, I want to cut my eyes out half the time, man. Especially that last one you sent, man. I was ready to kill myself, man. So, I but be, I, so that's but the I, team, brother. That's the team, brother. Huh? That's the team that be sending them out. Oh, well, listen, man, whoever sent it out, man, listen, man, I get the point already. I already know what's going on. I don't need to, I really want to cut my own eyes out, man, just from looking at some of the pictures of some of the videos, man. I, I, can't, I can't look at them. I just, I see the email and I read, you know, what's, what's written on there and then I just go about my business. I don't watch the links, man. I, I can't do it no more because I'm about to, I just want to throw up, brother. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Anybody else got anything before we go to our next call? Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, look, I'm sure I don't like these little – y'all, y'all telling me, look, there's it's a few things I don't like. I don't like no <laughs> soft voice Bama. The, the soft voice Bama, I'm going to slap the uh, – I'm not going to slap nobody. Let me stop. I don't like no soft voice Bama. The second thing, I talked about it before, man, this gay smack, man. I'm going to smack the hell out of one of these things. Why do they smack, man? Look, if you eat now, ladies, you can smack. Look, y'all y'all know what I'm saying. Mwah, mwah. <laughs> he just, he just, he just, <laughs> are you smacking, man? Why are you smacking, dude? There's no reason to be smacking. Not even that look, man. It drives me nuts, man. And then <laughs> the last thing, man, these fags. What is, it's like when you a straight dude, you might know a dude he's cool, but then as soon as he go into the fag thing, everything has an S on it. Like instead of saying, yeah, it's a lot of men out there, it's a lot of meanings out there. Men. Oh. It's plural, men. It doesn't matter how many, it's men. You don't know, have men. Yeah. <laughs> this is about fags that they got to smack and they got to put the S on everything. I, I, does anybody know the answer to that? Oh, no. Uh, I'm not uh, a fag. I couldn't tell you. I, I, I don't know, bro. 
I, I, I don't like how they put their faces together, man. Like they, they, it's like they, they sucking their cheeks on their face, like pucker in their lips, looking, makes you want to just uh, punch them in their nose. Like I can't a fish. Yeah, I don't know what that that gay face. That's what I call it, that gay face. <laughs> Got that fag face on, that swan look. Man, what is that? Uh, I would say from a, a woman's perspective that oh, I definitely dude. agree. And um, if you are heterosexual, you want to sound heterosexual. There's nothing worse than some dude trying to talk to you with some kind of elder barge thing <laughs> going on. <laughs> I don't like it. <laughs> yeah, look, no elder barge dude yeah. up on the horizon. Yes, sir. We good? All right, we're going to go Hello? to our next phone call. Uh, Hello? 3307, you live. I'm sorry, I was just listening. All right, thank you for listening, sis. 2870, you live on Warner Horizon. 2870. All right, going once, going twice. All right, they're just listening. Uh, 7176, you live on One Horizon. Oh, peace, family. How you doing, warrior? How you doing, brother? All right. See, that's what I'm talking about. The brother got the bass. You hear that? The brother so low. The bass was shaking up the phone. That's what I'm talking about. Come on in here, brother. How you doing? I'm doing pretty good, fam. I know I just joined in on you guys' uh, conversation. I know I got to say one thing. Um, I'm noticing um, right now, you know, them pushing everything with this uh, whole same-sex marriage thing. One thing I do notice is you do see a lot of um, older black males, you know, in uh, corporate America um, out there a lot. I'm noticing when I look at these news clips and everything, and, you know, with a lot of them, it's like how you out there marching and everything for that, but then you came and be about your own people, and you came up through the era of us having dogs and shit sticks on us. I just don't understand it, brother. Mm. And you know that's real. They 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 they've uh, <clears throat> they've recruited a substantial amount of black people into the interest of working for gay rights, but those same people are not working. Uh, diligently against the homosexual push in the black community and not working against the invasion of the African continent and not working against the uh, destruction of black uh, HBCUs, colleges, and institutions. They're not fighting poverty in the black community and increasing uh, unemployment, rising unemployment rate. They're not doing anything for black people, uh, uh, for the black agenda, or that's another question we got to ask if we even have a black agenda, but um, they're not doing anything for black people, but they've enlisted themselves into this this, uh, white sex war to promote degeneracy in our communities, and I, I, I agree with you totally on, on, on white collar. Matter of fact, we're talking about this, and I think you would probably agree with this, and anybody can chime in at any time with this. But I think I think everybody has seen this on these white collar jobs. You know, uh, 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 you know the Wall Street types, the, the, the you know the, the lawyers. These are the most gayest, and if, even if they're not gayest, they're the most either they super gay. They ultra feminine, they ultra weak, or they they talk like this and that. I mean, they so much of a cracker. They more cracker than a cracker. A cracker be looking at them and say, "Wow, you're a really good cracker," you know. So <laughs> they completely void of any black male aggressive manhood. I mean, it's like the 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 the, 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 the I don't know what you call it, uh, Wall Street or, or, or the, the the white collar industries in this country. Um. Uh, the business industry in this country is completely void of strong, aggressive, self-respecting black manhood. And it's almost like it's not said verbally that you're not supposed to be a strong black man, but it's, it, it's done institutionally so that everybody knows going in, either you're going to be a punk or a cracker lover, a weak sucker or a fag, or you can't exist in here. Would you say that that's a reasonable statement, brother? Oh, yes, I would, brother, and I can um, give an experience of seeing that um, over the past few months, well, before I moved back to Virginia, I was working for, um, contracting for a music company up in uh, Philly, and a lot of the clients that was coming in there looking for media work, a lot of them were those same type of black men. I mean, even some was holding purses. I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know, 
you say that, and I, look, I'm not making this up, brothers. And, and, and this, is, this is nothing. I'm not knocking the nation at all because I, I really don't believe these people are in the nation. But have y'all seen this? This is the weirdest thing. I've I seen it, and it, it was about the third or fourth time I've seen it, and it's starting to creep me out. I realize, though, that they're not from the nation. But have you noticed there are these fags out here now? And they're wearing black suits and black bow ties. But I know they're not from the nation. I'm not, I'm not, this has nothing to do with the nation, but they look like the traditional old school Elijah Muhammad nation. I mean, bald heads, real – this man was carrying a, a – a, 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 holding a, a, a seal sucker, a, a, a man purse. But, okay, if he didn't have that purse, if he was walking with a bean pie, you'd have swore he was in the nation of Islam. Real clean, you know, strong-looking brother, but he had this purse instead of a, like a pie. But he like the third or fourth dude I seen like this, and I said these dudes ain't in the nation. This, there's some kind of fag thing going on with there. Like it's these real clean looking fags that are taking the old school nation style and starting to rock it around the D.C. area. It's real weird. Has anybody else seen that? Or am I the only one? No, I haven't seen that. I'm telling you right now. I, okay, I've seen like ain't in the nation. dudes doing this. But I never thought they was the nation because they was doing some gay stuff. Now I'm realizing it, it hit me the other day when I looked at this dude real hard. I said, he's not part of no nation. He's not even a Muslim. But what they're doing is these fags are encroaching on the nationalist or pan-Africanist or black movement. And so what they're doing is they're wearing dashikis. They're going to start wearing panther uniforms. Uh, they, I haven't seen that, but I know what they're doing because I, I can see it. They, 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 they robbing the nation style. But then fagging that joint out with some purse or something like that to really, it, it's really an assault on the pan Africanist commu- community. I mean, I'm real serious when I say this, brothers and sisters. They coming at us from all angles, and that's that's a big one that I'm seeing now. It's like the third or fourth dude I've seen that I would I would have thought that. And, and going to what he's saying, it's like, it's like everywhere you turn, the fags. It doesn't matter what if it's the grocery store, if it's hiring, if it's athletics. The fags in our community are everywhere, and and and, and I feel like they 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 they're getting strength uh, over top of us. Now, what region are you calling from, bro? I'm calling from uh, Virginia. What, 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 what region? Uh, I'm in uh, Newport News. Okay, so you down in Tidewater? Oh yeah, I am. Okay, I went to Hampton University. Ask when I went there, you very you very seldom saw a fag. Is it different now? I mean, do you? Oh, see brother, it's different now. It's funny you say Hampton. It's different now, brother. <laughs> a lot of them same brothers you were just talking about walking around in those suits. A lot of them are there. A lot of them are there. Yeah, I said, you know, they done switched the fashion up so much now. You can't tell who's wearing women's clothes and who's really wearing men's clothes. Okay, so you've seen the same thing I'm talking about. These dudes walking around, but they they fags, but they they look like traditionally like more like men. Yeah, well, you know, some of them are very flamboyant, but then you do have those who are most likely DL and they're walking around and, you know, men looking attire, but it's real preppy looking. Yes, that's what I'm talking about, real preppy, gay, Fonsworth type stuff. And a lot of those are the same ones in the fraternities you see walking around like that. So the fraternities, is it fair to say the fraternities in the black schools now are just pretty much gay? If you're in a fraternity, you're a fag. Well, every story I keep hearing of, you know, a lot of the initiations and all that stuff, that's all I keep hearing, uh, primarily with ones like, uh, what's the one? What's the one with the uh, yellow and the uh, purple? The Q's? The Q's? Ones, yeah, ones like that, yeah. Wait, 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 wait. So, the, I mean, we always knew Kappas and Alphas was a lot of fags, but you telling me now the Q's are known for being a bunch of gumps? Oh, yeah. Wow. Wow. Anybody any anybody got anything for the brother? The marching bands too. Oh yeah, death oh yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Marching bands big big time. I had a brother he go to on uh, North Carolina A and T. He's in one and he told me they had um I what was it? Somebody had to go back in there to go get some equipment and they saw two brothers in there having sex. Oh yeah, it's really deep with them too. <laughs> The marching band dudes having sex with each other. There you gotta get that first chair, bro. <laughs> oh boy! All right, my brother, were you calling from Tidewater? You got anything else for us? 
just one more thing, and um, I just want to confirm a lot of what you guys say, especially when you talk about the music industry, because when I was up in um, uh, Wilmington, uh, between Wilmington and uh, Philly, um, a brother that I was working for, he put me on to a lot of information about what a lot of these celebrities are doing, um, you know, on these tour buses and then also um, behind closed doors. And pretty much um, a lot of them will have whoever's around them that's working for them sign these confidentiality agreements to where, okay, say so I use Janet Jackson as an example because she is a lesbian. Um, they'll have you sign off. You can't disclose the information of, you know, whatever sexuality and then all of this and close for this amount and all this sort of thing. So a lot of this stuff really is going on behind closed doors. But, you know, they'll play it off by, you know, being around uh, men if it's women or being around a woman if it's men, that sort of thing. But a lot of them are down or just messing around. It's all really never behind closed doors. <clears throat> yeah, I, uh, I know some people in the industry, and it's more people who are into this stuff than are not. I mean, it's only a few people. Everybody I talk to say, no, Ice Cube is straight as an arrow. Um, like he's the only one I can think of right off the top of my head. That everybody said, no, he's straight. <clears throat> but um, most of the other guys in this music industry, most of them are some fags, man. I mean, like, and the sisters are lesbos. I mean, I'm going to say the vast majority. I mean, it's so bad, it's hard for me to name the ones that are because it's more of them that's, I mean, it's, it's too many of them that are and very few of them that's not involved in this stuff. All right, bro. Well, we appreciate you uh, tuning in and definitely appreciate you giving us a call, and we'll definitely see you on the battlefield, my brother. See you there, brother. Yes, sir. All right. Now, now, what I want to do now, because uh, we we pretty much wrapping up the program now. <clears throat> uh, if anybody wants to get a last-minute call, you can call in 760-569-7676. That's 760-569-7676. Participation code 948656-POUND. That's 948 948- Six five six pound. What I want to do is, um, as it relates to our topic, of, which I think, even though we gave different numbers, I think it's a, a complete agreement on the line now. I think we we can fairly say that we we see this as a huge problem, and a problem we cannot afford to ignore, uh, and one that we must address directly uh, on some level. So um, the question I have for people, not the question, but what I'd like people to do in, in, in wrapping this up, um, give your basic final synopsis of what the situation is, how dire the situation is, and what ultimately we have to do to change this situation of this, this growing white sex, homosexuality, pedophilia in the black community, and uh, any pardon shouts you have for our people. So. We'll start like we did in the beginning with the prettiest person on the line. Uh, we will start with uh, Sister Lady Shabazz. All right. I guess my final synopsis is just to realize that homosexual rights have trumped heterosexual rights. They have a right to be as nasty as they want to be, but we do not have a right to be normal, functioning African people. So we need to take a stand. We need to stop worrying about hurting each other's feelings. We need to make people uncomfortable if necessary, whenever necessary, and definitely teach our children um, not be so soft. Let them know if you bring, you know, you will not bring this home. If you try to come home with somebody of the same sex or something like that, you are not welcome here and you're no longer my child and you can go on about your business and do whatever because that's not how you were raised. We have to be proactive and we have to be strong and we have to be willing to sacrifice the people we love, um, you know, because it's not acceptable. And as long as we accept it, um, it's going to keep going on. It's going on because we're accepting it. Mm. Okay, well, that's strong and powerful, sister. We love you uh, and we will definitely see you on the battlefield. Yes, sir. All right. Um, now we're going to go to my brother, Mayasa Bomani. You can do a crack of granny. Yeah, I, I just want to say that uh, we need to understand that uh, this homosexual or white sex assault that's being uh, put on our people, if we don't fight this war, it's checkmate. Like, we cannot have a nation if we accept this, this misbehavior. We cannot have strong black families and strong communities if we accept this behavior. This is the... The, the 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 last piece on the checkboard before a game is over, in my opinion. I, I believe the the situation is that serious, um, and I think we need to have some rules. Like I don't believe every.
black male that wears skinny jeans is participating in homosexual, uh, anti-sexual activity, like the brother said. Um, however, if you coming around with neon green, pink, skinny jeans, you got that uniform on of a homosexual and you will be treated like one mm. when you're around me and in our community. Uh, we got to deal with the, with, with, the, with the homosexual pedophiles in our community, and we don't need anybody's uh, approval to do it. Black men, if we, we understand what's going on, we got to unite, we got to unify, and we got to handle business. We got to get our hands dirty and handle business. A BB for Hodier. A BB for Hodier. Grab heaters with no delay. That's my brother, Bomani Mayasa from the Mayasa family. My brother, uh, Body Shot. Um, as far as I'm concerned, there's there's no intellectual uh, approach. There's there's no debate or discussion in order. Are these facts want to sodomize our sons. I, I don't have anything to discuss uh, at that point. I, I think we need uh, moving forward. We need to understand that uh, this is a zero sum game, meaning there's one winner and one loser. There's no way for us to coexist. The fact that he's a fag means that he's anti-black life. He cannot, produce, he cannot produce black life. He does not want black life. I'm a black man. I produce beautiful black babies. So somebody's going to have to go. Is it going to be us or is it going to be them? And uh, for, 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 in my closing, the black women, uh, I said this plenty of times before, when you got a young boy, 12, 13, 14, that's blossoming and coming into his own, Stop telling him to take the bass out of his voice. That, 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 the result of what we seen earlier is a black woman telling her black son to take the bass out of his voice. He's a man. He's supposed to have bass in his voice. And when you go grocery shopping with your sons and you go out shopping, don't give your son your pocketbook. Give him the groceries. Mm. I mean, these are very fundamental, practical things that we mm. can do to start, to start reinforcing black manhood. And, 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 like, I was out at the restaurant the other night, and these two salacious, concupidous fags come and sit right next to my table. I mean, the brother can't even enjoy the feminine energy at my own table without fags invading, invading my space, bruh. I mean, I had to tell the manager, you either reseat these fags or I'm gone. Give me my check. So we, we, we must start to take a very hostile and definitive position. Uh, and, and we must force those in our inner circle, in our nucleus, our, our women, our children, uh, our associates, whoever we may associate with, and let them know if you're going to be around me, you must take a definitive position. I, I don't want no loose ends around me. I want to know where everybody that I come in contact with, we must start to force them to take positions. Because, like I told a brother the other day, he said, well, I don't have a problem with them. You know, I'm not a fag. Whatever they do is their business. I said, you don't understand. I said, if you don't take a position, you might as well go huddle up in your house with you and your son and, and on your way home, stop by CVS and get you a, a bottle of Vaseline because they're going to be coming to knock your door down. Mm -hmm. All right, is that it? That's Any it. final words, brother? Oh, I think he's talking about being bad, brother. Is that it, bro, body chest? Yes, I'm done. I'm done. All right. We appreciate that, and we'll definitely see you on the battlefield. That's that brother that produced a secret relationship between black leaders and small hats that will be out this coming weekend. So you make sure you look out for that email, and you order that thing as soon as it hits the uh, – as soon as you get that email, because the block is hot on that one. These hats are having some trouble. Uh, my brother, true and living God. Yes, sir. In closing, family, uh, we just want to say a few points. I want to start off with uh, reading a small, uh, small words from uh, Dr. Africa in the uh, intro of Homosexuality and Feminization of African Males. He wrote, Europeans operating within their cultural instincts to turn as many African males into females as possible. This conscious act is twofold. It is, it is designed to, number one, remove African men as a threat by having them internalize a powerless, immature malehood instead of a strong, conscious manhood, manhood as adults, and to elevate the highly questionable manhood of adult European males to that of the model 
of manhood by lowering our standards of manhood beneath theirs. Um, and also, we got to understand that Nellie Fuller said in the 60s that they're going to have black men wearing skirts. This is war. This is a war tactic. This is war strategy. It's not a game. It is not, this is not a, a new phenomenon. This is a process that has been happening. Uh, two books that everybody must read. One on Horizon, Black Resistance to the White Sex Assault, and Homosexuality and the Feminization of African Males uh, by Bob Ruti. One on Horizon is written by our brother, Irritated Gene. And uh, let's unite the black family. That's uh, one of the most important things. The fathers got to be home. You got to raise the standards. Be a man, not just in the flesh, but in your behavior, in the way you speak, putting bass in your voice, and just in, you know, just everyday manhood, fighting. Uh, that's another thing. These fags are training. The brother was on the phone talking about fags in the army. You know, a lot of dudes is unhealthy, man. I know y'all. A lot of y'all can't run a mile without getting gassed up. These fags is working out, man. You know what you're going to do when these fags back you up in the corner? You can't defend yourself. You can't defend your son, your daughter, your queen. This is real. So this is, this is, it's not a game. We got to take this very serious. So in closing, uh, let's unite the black family. Men, man up. If you don't know how to be a man, find a man and, you know, ask him. Be for Odia. Be before Hodier, grab heaters with no delay. Uh, King Samir. Brother King Samir? Brother King Samir. All right. All right. Well, uh, obviously the brother's online, but maybe his, his phone's not coming through. Well, brothers and sisters, uh, we pretty much know what King Samir going to say. It's time to wage this war. So that's what we're going to do. In wrapping the program up, uh, I would like to say uh, to my brothers and sisters out there, this is a basic, fundamental declaration of warfare. Um, but it's not the war. It's the single battle we have to win in order for us to fight the war. Um uh, it goes to something that Brother Body Chats was saying a little earlier. The ultimate war is not fighting against homosexuality because that's something we shouldn't even be talking about. But in fighting that, that's the final battle that the European can win that can destroy us as a race of people. So in order for us to get into this war, the war that we want for our survival, the war that black men should not be trying to avoid, but we should be trying to push towards to see our people have complete dominion over planet Earth, to which at that time we can then systematically go throughout the world and punish every contributor to the harm and the damage of African people uh, historically, which means we can deal with every European on the planet. We can go to the Asiatic and deal with the Asiatics that need to be dealt with. The Arab can be decimated in the way that they need to be decimated. Everyone that has actively participated in the destruction of African people worldwide, we can systematically, when we are in power, meet out justice in that way and, and during that space and that time. And in order for us to get there, there's a battle that we have to win. And that battle is the one that we're talking about right now. We have to be able to produce healthy children who we can point to their enemies and show them who their enemies are and prepare them to destroy their enemies and to be rulers of this world, meaning to build a world that's in their own interest. We cannot do that when we're allowing males to plow through their backsides, when we allow males to violate our, our little young daughters sexually before they even get a chance to, 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 to feel the beauty of what it means to be an African princess, an African black woman. Uh, this is our responsibility. As men, we lost the wars that got us in the condition that we in today. We can't cry over spilled milk, but we can certainly uh, spill somebody else's milk. And that's what it's time for us to do, take these milky fags, and, and, and really deal a death blow to this filth coming into our community. And I really believe that it starts not with the overall global black community, but with those of us who call ourselves Pan-African. Because Pan-African means, one, you know that you're an African. That means a lot. That's revolutionary in the world 
where black people don't even want to be black. To say I'm more than just black. I'm a black. I'm an African. I come from the African continent. These are my ancestors. These are my people. We were first. We are determined to be last. Uh, that means a lot in order to be pan-African. And then when you say pan-African, that means that I see myself as an African that belongs to a family of black people that exists all over the world. And we have a culture, we have a history, and we have some standards, and we're going to enforce our standards. And we're not going to allow anybody else to change our sexual standard, which is a consenting black man is the only proper mate for a consenting black woman. And in order to enforce that, which is our culture, we have to go to war on every level, psychologically, educationally, militarily, anything you can think of, educationally, in every area of people activity, propaganda, media, whatever we can use to take this world back for our people is what we have to do. And this battle starts not marching for no civil rights, not fighting for the right to vote. Even in this moment, I'm not saying we shouldn't fight police brutality, but that is not the, 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 the starting point. The starting point for laying this war down is for those of us who say we're Pan-Africanists, Black nationalists, Haitianists, to say, okay, no fags, no pedophiles in our space. There's a, there, there is a space in the black community. If you can get to that space, if you can reach that space and get in, there's no faggots and won't, no faggotism be allowed. There's no pedophiles, no molesting of children won't be allowed. If we find it out, we deal with it very definitively. It's absolute that we don't allow it and don't bend and don't buck and don't chagrin and don't negotiate that position. We build that space. And from that space, we take over our communities and we take over the world. We destroy our enemies and we live happily ever after. That's what I have to say. I want to thank you, brothers and sisters, for tuning in to War on the Horizon. I want to thank all of our wonderful guests who laid down our standing program. We're going to put this back up. It's going to run 7 to 9 every uh, 7 to 9.30 every uh, Saturday uh, until next month because this is an outstanding program. So you can get to listen to it over and over again. Tell your friends and family. We're also going to put it up on the uh, website so that people can listen to it. And we want to thank you for tuning in. We know we've offended some people, but remember, we didn't come here to be your friend. We love you. We came here to save you. And we'll see you on the battlefield. War on the horizon. You got to love. Ain't no faggot. If a man won't protect his own behind, he will do nothing for our race. If a sister will not come out of that behavior, if a sister doesn't want out of that behavior, and if she goes to bed at night lusting after a female, she can't build no nation. You're wasting your, my, and our racist black time. Leave them alone. This is one. Brothers and sisters. Gotta stand up. Death the white supremacy, fight this homosexual assault on our children, yo. Death them faggots too. Again. Somebody watch your lemonade, you dealing with a renegade. I'm thinking about getting free and thinking about getting paid. The time to make a change mentally, you still a slave and misbehave like the same beast who came out the cave. No matter how you word it, homosexual perversion. That ain't African and that's a fact, fuck that I'm certain. Your rappers are fruity, smelling like booty. Faggots wear skinny jeans, don't matter if it's Gucci. Smoke you like a Lucy just for thinking you can do me. You messing with Louie, yo faggot, I like you. You think you got swag, but I think you a fag. Lil Wayne look like a tight. Rappers dressing in drag. Should be rapping at the gate parade. Mohawk with funny shades. Booty dudes looking sick. Somebody gave this lemon aid. This ain't gay fashion. It's murder. Straight casket. Little plated magnum. I see you. I'm straight blasting. Face gas is razor. Stretch flashing. Gasoline lighter. Fire. Straight action. Running straight back. Hit me a straight bag. And now I'm a straight bag. You can hear me. I hate bag. Yes, I'm homophobic. She's been moving like a robot.
Sure. Every home is exit only. Testimony on stack of vitals. Phenomenon is genocide. Fight for African survival. Poor shit ain't fast enough. Black on black ain't fast enough. Crack and smack ain't fast enough. They move on mama Africa. Live grenades, drive parade. Yeah, I'm trying to blow you up. Man to man, it's so unjust. 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 Man to man